13 points for me. For Sharon, about to be ploughed into the middle of the MCG. Here's Darren Berry, thanks to Woe Lily on K Rock Football. Guthrie is wearing Dustin Martin like one of those tattoos as the ball goes up. Prestia off the ground, Richmond off the ground, send it to their half forward line. Tui was good, got a handball over the top, not so good. Dusty, a clever little tap over the top to Lambert. Wobbly ball inside 50 for the Tigers. Lonigan goes back, he's held up in a tackle. Players crashing from everywhere, it stays in play. Guthrie deep in the back pocket, feeds a handball to Buse. Buse on the right boot, a wobbly one to half back. Parfit came out to meet it. The dustbin picks it up. Gave the don't argue. Got a little cheeky kick across. Lambert's in underneath the footy and eventually, in what is a hot opening, it goes over the boundary line. One back alley plant farm matchups. Lee Brown, Chappie. Yep, yeah, we've got uh, Joel Selwood and Prestia together. Dangerfield is playing on Cochin. Uh, Alex Rands, ex- um, went to um, Hawkins and Dusty Martin and Guthrie, as uh, Chuck said. OK, the Rance one's interesting. We'll give the boys oh. a bit of a chance to look. Man, Curvis, a free kick from that stoppage goes to the Geelong skipper and you can hear the boos of the Tigers faithful. That rain, that rain coming down quite heavy now, Chuck. Thanks, Bucky, at boundary side. He's going to keep us up to date right throughout the night. Little short ball from Selwood to Duncan. Who's had an exceptionally good year. I'm surprised he didn't get nominated, at least in the 40 of the yep. All-Australian team. Maybe not the team. Short one to Hawkins in turn to Motlop. Now he feeds a handball to Duncan, who run on. Tried to give the don't argue. That was sensational. Prestia did not budge, and then he smothered it off the boot, and it goes over the boundary line. So a tight opening, as Paul Chapman expected. A minute 40 gone in the opening term. Give where you live scoreboard. Neither team has registered as yet. Ian Cowan on K-Rock footy. Prestia, the tiniest tiger out there at 175 centimetres, but he certainly made them count. Members side, packed house, MCG. Smith comes in, shoveled it down towards Cochin. Managed to get a little low ball. There's Prestia involved again. He heads out towards Rioli. He does a bit of Kevin Bartlett over the top. The 17's running towards 50. Shut down by Mitch Duncan. Scrambled the ball forward. Caddy bullocks his way through. Handball's boundary side. Lonigan intercepted. Guthrie now with an opportunity. Prestia hems him in. Lonigan might see it out of bounds. No. Tumble punt member's side. Hawkins went for the man rather than the ball. Got pushed underneath it. Asprey the recipient. Squaring ball to the king of the wildlings in Vloston. He sends it to the hot spot. Revolt. Couldn't get a run out. Fished it over the back. Stuck it off the ground. Tigers have got the first blow. Might have been Townsend, I think. Coca. Townsend. What an impact he's had. In the last month of football, Tigers on the board. Geelong yet to score one straight six, two and a half minutes gone. Thanks, Chuck. Give away live scoreboard. Yeah, fantastic uh, little flick off the ground there from Townsend. He's actually got the matchup of Lockie Henderson. So the, the taller opponent got up the ground a little bit there and then got him on the way back. But a uh, nice way for Richmond to start this game. So what a story that young man's been. He kicked 11 goals in the last two weeks and he's kicked the first one tonight. The Tigers kick near their spiritual home end, the punt road end. And the yellow and black flags were everywhere. There's a massive crowd in tonight. It is 90 plus. They are full to the roof. We might even tip the ton. Out of the middle, the Tigers go again. Goes towards College Asney on centre wing. Bum, a fumbly footy. Eventually got a little quick give out. Chicken wing was two Tigers wanted holding the ball and they got it. The Tigers fans wanted it. The free kick will go to their skipper. Cochin, he's about 70 from goal. Plays on with a drop punt. Low ball, back of the pack, or doing the roving. Nice, over the top, fumbling footy, can Jack Rewalt. Snaps on goal! I think he's missed it. To the right-hand side, maybe had a fraction more time than he thought, but he threw it onto the right boot. Tigers have started well, Chappie, 1-1-7. Geelong yet to score. Four inside fifties on the fags. Might attend stat sheet to nothing in favour of the Tigers. Damien Hardwick called it positive affirmation, I think, when the umpires maybe get a little swayed by the home crowd. Well, at the moment, the Tiger Army is cheering every single thing, and they want a free kick all the way around. Ball's going to come back with a little bit of interest. Dangerfield might be his first touch. Tried to get through. Taken down to ground. The Tigers. Dustin goes off the ground. Can't get penetration with that kick. Little tumble punt. Zach Guthrie in over the top. Did he 
Ben Fringe, Nankervis, Rioli. Everyone wants to soccer it. It's wet weather football. Buse with a clamping tackle 30 metres out. And progress is stopped. What a great start to the game. It is hot in oh. there, isn't it? Both teams are giving absolutely everything, knowing how important the start is. Good call, chap. There's no oxygen in there. Certainly not. Motlop, hip and shoulder. Ball goes down to ground. Townsend couldn't get it. Dangerfield emerges from the back 50. Decides a squaring ball into the corridor. Rance, did he mark it? Well, they say yes. Taylor got a little punch on it, but the All-Australian captain heads towards the outer side. Two-on-two competition out there. There's spot fires breaking out everywhere at the moment because the players are so aggressive at this stage. Twist and turn by the Tigers. They try and get it in, but Lonigan. Final season for him, stands resolute. Gives to Selwood and they go to Parford on the far side. Yeah, out on the Brunton Avenue centre wing. Thought about kicking, then went short by hand instead to Motlop. He turns back inside onto his right boot. That's a shocking kick. Not sure who it was aimed for. Maybe the leading Hawkins. Chopped off by the Tigers, they're out. That shot at the half forward. Jack Rewald's got it in his mitts. Spearing low ball into the pocket. Dusty's there. Dusty, snap around the corner. Won't come back far enough. Tigers have started well. They are winning first use of the football, Lee Brown. 1-2-8 Richmond, Geelong yet to score, but the Tigers are winning more of the footy. Yeah, they, yeah, they are. They're getting their hands on the ball. A couple of times, though, Chappie, Geelong just need to kick the ball over into space in their forward half. Yeah, great call. I love that Richmond, they're just winning their one-on-ones at the moment. So important early in the game to be able to do that. Tui getting the booze of the Tiger fans as he drives it straight oh, down the middle. Great Contender for Hamlin Holmes, hanger from Dangerfield. Under enormous duress. Great pack mark. Now a little handball over the top. Scooter Selwood. Cats are into the forward 50 for the first time this evening. Hawkins is there. Parsons needs to get to Murdoch. He's got to get it on the right. Booty ain't got one. He kicks it out of bounds on the full. Daniel Day-Lewis. No right boot, just my left foot from Jordan Murdoch. Disappointing result, boys. Cats had 21 possessions. Eight of them have been turnovers. It's from the great pressure of uh, of the Tigers. They've just they've come to play. They look really confident in their game plan. They've been clean around the contest. They're actually getting one spitting out forward of the contest early too, which is not the way finals is particularly played. Voice of Paul Chapman, Geelong champ, knows all about pressure of the finals. A 35 that he wore on his back just flew high there. Dangerfield hits ground level. This is sensational, boys. This is finals footy at its best. Last night was a little bit of a sort of an entree, if you like, but tonight... MCG style. I reckon there might be a hundred in the house. It is electric at the moment. Up it goes again. Nan Curvis wins the tap. Smith, an unlikely rover, put to ground. Umpire Simon Overland said it's a free kick against you, Zach. And Graham is going to be the recipient for the Tigers in front of the members' stand. So seven and a half minutes gone in the opening term. Richmond have started the better team, but one, two, eight to the catch yet to score. Graham. Thumping ball along the line. Smith goes back. He was held on to, I think he was, against Jack Rewalt. So Zach Smith, no waste, no time, gives a handball to Henderson. Then he touched it on the ground. Maybe a bit of that precipitation. He didn't want to bounce. Sends it long forward. Where's Menzel? Oh, no, he's not there. Back of the pack. Tigers have got numbers. Rance has started well. Put it onto his right boot. It was a hurried kick into the middle. Clean bowl. Georgie Castagna, I think, went right through his legs. Two, he picked it up. Mackey thumped the ball, deep back inside 50, out on the lane. Taylor couldn't hold the mark, gave it to Dangerfield, snapping ball. Cats just panicking a little bit at the moment. They register their first score, a minor score. Eight and a half minutes gone, one two, eight to one behind, Tigers in front. Panicking, but as Chappie mentioned before, the pressure from the Tigers outstanding at the start of this first quarter. Lee Brown for Goddings, your Kubota excavator dealer, platinum status as well. The kicking's fairly untidy from the Tigers, and Parfit just punches it out of bounds with a flying slip sketch style. And 55 around from the Cats goal, they'll get another chance. Cats lead the tackle count 11 7, but they've conceded more of the footy inside 57 3 in favour of the Tigers on the Fags Mitre 10 stat sheet. All the stats thanks to Fags Mitre 10. Blitzarms goes up against Nankervis. Got it down to Selwood. Grig intercepted though. Hurried ball. Nankervis thought about claiming a mark. It went one millimetre. Nothing doing there. Parfit hit the ball hard. Blitzarms is lurking on the boundary side. Now forced to tackle and a metre inside the perimeter on the members' side. It will be a bounce. 51 from home for the Cats. They need a goal. They trail by seven points. So uh, Selwood in the middle there. Edwards with him. Blitzarves and then Curvis go at it. Scott Selwood then. 
Ran onto it hard, got a little low ball towards Hawkins, who then thought he was Cristiano Ronaldo and tried to soccer it from the forward pocket and kicked it eight rows deep. Another free kick to the Tigers, and they'll bring it down the members' side. Yep, it's an awkward kick, but it fell nicely for Edwards. Dished off the handball. Grieg went across the sort of face of goal across the centre-half back line. Pushed and used his body well. I reckon it was McIntosh. Yep. Kicks it to half forward. It wasn't a great kick, though. And Henderson went back and took a nice relieving mark on the half-back line for Geelong. Brunton Avenue side of the MCG. Capacity. Big packed house here at the home of footy. Geelong haven't got a goal in 10 minutes of footy. To half forward, they shoot it now. Although yellow and black sash everywhere. Off hands. Uh, and free kick. Free kick. Terrence, is it? He started well. Joel Salwich is coming off for his first rest for Total Tools. Looks to be running quite well at the moment, Chuck. Thank you. Heath Bucket, boundary side, doing a sterling job for us tonight. We've got the full team in the house, the two big boys in the back row. Goes to half forward for the Tigers again. Handball comes over the top to the running press here. He fumbled at the crucial moment there. Allowed the Geelong defenders in. Little underground handball. It was aimed at Duncan. Intercepted, though, by McIntosh. Off hands, desperate footy again, and we'll have a boundary throw in, 60 out from the punt road end goal, which the Tigers are attacking in this first term. They're 1-2-8, Geelong one behind. This is magnificent stuff, goes up. Most of the footy's been played in the Richmond end of the ground. They're attacking the punt road end. Nankervis and Blitzovs go at it again. Prestia just couldn't quite find the handle, went down to ground. There might be a free kick to Scooter Selwood here. He went in low, and Scott Selwood... Got a little relieving one on the left half-back. Gene and Curvis has been a good recruit for Richmond. Added toughness to their side. Fantastic. Selwood got it down the line and Dangerfield marks almost unopposed. The pack forming up a metre or two behind him. Good protection. Taylor went at Rance, tried to take him out of the contest. Now he tackles him with his head right in his guts. The umpire's going to have to make a call and he does. He's pinned the All-Australian captain for holding. Harry Taylor's done really well. Chappie, go through. Yeah, so he's paid advantage. He came out, he blew his whistle, and Harry Taylor tried to kick it, kick it away, and uh, got smothered out of bounds. Yeah, now Rance has got issues here for Total Tools as well, and he's slow to get up. Don't know if he copped one in the... Oh, he's really staggering. He ripped the towel off the trainer there and has now put it to his head. It's the blood rule. He's not happy. Heath Buck's down at ground level. Bucky, when he gets near you, you'll be able to tell from the expression that Rance is not very happy with this at all. Yeah, he's just coming from the field now. He's only got himself to blame, though. He, 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 put, his, uh, he put his head down into that tackle. He's coming from the field. Yes. He's got the towel on the left hand and, and bleeding on the forward region, Coz. I'll have a look at him as he comes to the bench. Just got the right knee of Harry Taylor as he was going down to pick up the ball. Nothing in it, just a... Uh, innocuous footy contact moment and uh, unfortunately he's just popped the cranium of Alex Rance. There's a fair bit of blood boys uh, just streaming from that forward region. I think he might have wanted to run past the umpire and just say, how did I not get a high free kick? Yeah. Well, I think the, the contact the contact was actually accidental. He just happened to put his head down onto his knee, so... That's what happens when you duck into it. Yeah, he's a good-looking rooster. As the cops sometimes say, you can come in here with the truth and good looks. You won't leave with both. Selwood goes around the corner. Hurried little kick towards the Taylor Territory. Basher Hawley. Ball nearly goes out. Chuck gives me an odd look for that particular expression. I've not been like Benny though at the Belmont Watch House <laughs> and hearing it firsthand. It's a mark to Mitch Duncan. Cats will go back into attack. Yeah, he's going to send them deep inside 50, looking for a high flyer. Big pack forms. There's no rants. Basher Hooley at the fall of the footy. Handball comes out the side door. Grimes tripped over. There's about 20 players around it. Eventually, Edwards with some clear space runs. Not as much space as Warralilly. You can get down there and get a house and land package, if you like. Into the fruit, into the middle of the G it goes. Bouncing ball. Buse. Oh. He got it high up higher. Surely he got that around the neck. It's going to say fumble the footy, but he got the free kick. The umpire didn't agree. He will eventually ball it up just inside the centre square. Lee Brown. Just a couple of players slipping over there. We spoke uh, before the game about long stops or the short ones, but uh, clearly they haven't put the uh, the long ones in at this point of the game. The voice of Lee Brown, Premiership player with the Pies, and, of course, the coach of the year in the TAC. Not to be sneezed at. Might be heading up to the Gold Coast. That's the strong whisper floating around at the moment. Goes forward towards Lonegan. It will start it anyway, Brownie. Be a fair pay increase. Goes out to Tui. Tui by hand to Mackey. 
Assesses the option, does the experienced one. Kicks at the centre wing. Add into the pathway of Scooter Selwood. Can it sit? Ball sits. Tackle. Martin closes him down. We'll have a boundary throw in. Centre wing. A cracking contest, Chappie. I know you're loving it. 14 and a half gone. Geelong still haven't registered a goal. Yeah, Damien Hardwick would be really proud of his players. More for the composure that they're showing. Edwards ran out of the D50 then and was able just to take him on, have a bounce, take control and then kick it forward. And the composure of Mackey there to get it close enough to the boundary that Selwood could take it over and neutralise the situation. Now it's a kicking off the ground and it goes against the Tigers. So Scott Selwood's been busy early. Fags might have 10. How's he travelling? Yeah, he's up to five touches equal with Mitch Duncan. Dustin Martin's had five for the Tigers. OK. Players went over like nine pins down there and there might be a free kick going to the Cats. Part of Jordan Murdoch it was that was taken down to ground. Pretty soft free kick, up boy. And Meatloaf Pocket, 52 out. Murdoch, who absolutely butchered a shot on the run, had no right boot a couple it's of minutes ago. It's quite amazing you can pick that up, yet Jed Hughes has his head ripped off yeah, in front of the yeah. umpire and it's play on. It's, it's bizarre. So Murdoch kicks 13 goals so far this season. He will set sail for home on the left peg, and he has equaled his out-of-bounds on one side with an out-of-bounds on the far side. Disappointing result from the 21. Tigers lead it by seven. Give away live scoreboard. Both left and right foot, too. You can do them with both. <laughs> he's he's <laughs> equally cool, unproficient. <laughs> <laughs> so the Tigers in the back pocket will thump the ball back to where it came from, out to the Murdoch or Meatloaf pocket, as we know it on K-Rock footy. Everyone can uh, assimilate with that. Goes now to centre wing. Motlop comes in, fumbles the footy, picked it up, got a handball to Lonigan. Run to pressure every kick they get Geelong. As Chappie said earlier, Richmond have turned up, as you would expect, hot, right on the contest. And the ball goes to half forward, but it's chopped off again by McIntosh, who kicks a high ball. Back to centre wing. Castagna, now the fleet-footed one. He fumbled, sort of kicked it off the ground, allowed the Geelong players with numbers as a free kick. It's going to Geelong. Total tools, Chuck. Alex Rance has come back from the ruins. He's just about to come back on. OK, so it's Motlop with the footy. Rance about to come back on for the Tigers. Not sure what Motlop was doing, but uh, he kicked it out of bounds on the full. Missed the target by about 30 metres. I reckon he's gone from X factor to Y factor, I would suggest, Motlop at this stage. Why he's managing to hang his spot in the team at the moment is uh, an interesting question. Two, he's marked it, almost on the 50 numerals out of sight. I'll get the chap in Lee Brown in a moment, but just as an observation, if the Cats are weathering this storm at the moment for 17 minutes and the Tigers have only got one goal, that's not the worst result. Two, he goes through the middle of the MCG. Grimes and Taylor will see it out of bounds. Boys, I'll get to you with that comment. There's been a lot of pressure. They've only got one goal. Yeah, it's a great call. They're doing enough just to, you know, limit the, what they're putting on the scoreboard. Although there's worrying signs, the ability for them to win it at the contest and also spread away from the contest from Geelong. So how long they can actually hold on to them and stop them from scoring remains to be seen. Yeah, and both teams are defending really well. So the ball's actually going up and down the line. Well, a flying shot at goal from... Parsons and the ball just tumbling to the right hand side so another point just the midfield mix we talked about pre-game Sam Menegola off 34 touches and three goals has not touched the footy yet. Tigers lead it by a goal. Centre wing Rioli flew almost to Hamlin's hangar he went up and over couldn't hold the mark now congested footy held up we'll have a ball up in front of the member stand and about five players run to the boundary line for some relief in the interchange young Guthrie comes on Mark Blitzarv's yet to touch the ball for the Cats. So a couple of Cats. Here's Blitzarv now. We get his first touch. It was a fumble. Wasn't a good one. Went over the boundary line. And Cotchum was right alongside him. We'll have a boundary throw in. In front of the MCC members stand here. Big crowd, as you would imagine. Two big teams. The Cats and the Tigers for a spot in the preliminary final. And the loser, they'll have to face off against the winner of the Swans and the Bombers. See, that was a lovely piece of roving from Butler, I think it was, who got it to half forward, Stewart, the president's favourite, short ball to Henderson, in fact to College Asney, just inside the centre square, he goes out wide again, it was a well directed kick, it speared and went towards Guthrie, that was a terrible hand pass, he gave it to Mackey that's what you call in the trade the hospital hand pass 
He sold back down the river and Linguini Arms had nowhere to go. He was held up in the tackle and Matt shouldn't have called for it. Well, maybe he didn't have the vision either. So, anyway, Rance is back on. He kicks a wobbly footy. Maybe he's dazed. Coming off the bench was Prestia. Couldn't hold the mark. Held up and held down in front of us, right in front of the interchange players. Score check, time check. 19 and a half minutes has elapsed in the opening term. Geelong are two behinds. Richmond one goal two, so six points separates the two teams. 12 premierships out there for the Cats, none for the Tigers. A lot more finals experience as well. An umpire has paid an over-the-shoulder infringement that's gone to Smith. Three kicks, eight, three, in eight, four in favour of the Cats. He feeds off to Dangerfield, who pumps it long down the members' side. Taylor can't quite mark Rance, will see it out of bounds, and will reload 80 from home for the Cats. It's amazing to think 20 minutes of football, Geelong just two points, Richmond are one, two, eight. It's playing a bit of ping-pong between the half-forward lines at the minute, kicking up and down the line. The first team to actually start to switch and run a little bit more, break this game open. Cats have got a couple loose out the back. If Smith can get it in that direction, he can't do it. Hurried ball from Grigg off the ground. Menegola went through, got Lambert out of the way. Then did he drop the pill? Don't know. Umpire put whistle to mouth. No blowage at this stage. Guthrie, hurried ball. That's Cam. Tigers are going to be away, though. Prestia through the middle of the MCG. Caddy, big barrel chest. The ball marks it. Then he goes towards Revolt, who marks 52 outs. Revolt's got a lead. Oh, he kicked it into the mouth. Henderson just got a little bit ahead of himself. Went back in and managed to tunnel it forward. 49 out from the Richmond goal at the punt road end. Stewart crashes in. He will provide a nil-all situation. And the ball will be bounced. Lee Brown and Paul Chapman here as well as Ben Kersnilla. 32 turnovers between these two sides. There's some error, error written footy at the minute. 17 to the Cats, 15 to the Tigers. Up it goes. Half forward line for the Tigers. Punt road end. Cochin and Danger, two superstars. Danger holds him in the tackle. Ball won't come free. Umpire calls him to get it out. He lets it go. Good umpiring in a hot finals contest. Prestia has shot out the side door. Two he was held on to. He's under pressure. Ball bobbling around. Fight on at centre half forward. Keep an eye on that one as well. Geelong with the numbers did well in the end. Stewart, tumbly little ball though. Wasn't great. Chopped off by Broad. 60 from goal. Griggs in the pocket demanding the footy. Not sure Broad spotted him. He goes towards him now. Griggs going to launch. So's Caddy. in best position. He was like decoy. Caddy came deeper and in a nest of cats or a litter of cats if you like he went up and he took the Hamlin Holmes hanger of the night 30 from goal. Fantastic mark particularly how wet it is out there. I mean these guys are playing at a level that make it look a little bit probably drier than what it is. So Josh Caddy Gold Coast Geelong Richmond is now his home. He hits the post. He hits the post from 30 out. 1-3-9 the Tigers. Geelong still haven't kicked a goal in 22 minutes of football. Kick in will come this side. Blitzabs is running the shepherd already for Dangerfield in game 200. It does go long. Taylor can't mark. Dangerfield. Quick handball. Blitzabs. Now it's Cam Guthrie. Long down the members' side. Parfitt's got to go. In the end, Bluffton diving mark. A metre or two inside the boundary. He threads that needle to McIntosh, who marks in front of Dangerfield. Have not had a goalless first quarter this season, the Cats. Mm. Well, they're shaping that way at the moment. 22, 23 minutes travelled, opening turn. McIntosh avails himself of 10 metres, kicks long down the line. Zach Smith, big fist, kills the contest. We'll see it out of bounds. No. Guthrie Cam gives to Tui. Mackey, high ball right in front of the interchange gates. Basha Hooley camped underneath it. Parfit did enough to upset the apple cart. Cats have got it going forward. Selwood just bashes it forward in the end, bashed it out of bounds, and he's going to be done for deliverance. You're kidding. He umpire. was clearly trying to get it going forward, umpire. That's ricocheted strange. off the defender, Asprey, and went out of bounds. Have a look at this on replay, boys. He's trying to move it forward. It's just an umpire. Well, the game. in the end, poetic justice. Asprey went around. Selwood ran in off the mark. The ball was smothered. Boundary throw in members' side. It is Geelong just two points. Richmond 1 at 3 9. Give where you live, building a better Geelong scoreboard for the opening term. Ominously for the Cats, their last uh, no goal first quarter was in the preliminary final against Sydney. Okay, danger field. Quick gear, but he sort of jolted out of his arm. Selwood crashed into. 
by the Richmond skipper Cochin and almost sort of Melbourne Storm styled over the uh, touchline, if you like, for a boundary throw in again. Tigers for mine, just a little bit more desperate than the Cats, but it's a tight contest. They haven't blown anyone out of the water in 24 minutes of footy. The question is, can the Cats get a goal in this opening term? Back in the play, Presti arose it, had his kick smothered. Cochin put his head over the footy, got a kick away, but it actually went towards the Geelong goals. Now Ellis picks it up and he's shoved over the boundary line again. So we've had a lot of boundary throw-ins. 24 and a half minutes gone in the opening term. The Tigers are one 3 9 Geelong just the two behinds. Ball is at half forward for Geelong. Member side of the MCG. She's a packed house, sardine style. Back it comes, Nan Curvis and Smith. Nice little tap. Edwards fell to the ground but got a handball away. Prestia fumbled it. Ball sort of just spilt free. Caddy picked it up. Kicked it to half forward. Townsend underneath it. Henderson just climbed all over him. Lucky to get away with it. Lonigan picked it up for Geelong. Chipping ball. Dangerfield oh. waited. Unusually Koch and crashed into him. Danger with a second effort. This is great footy. Hard, hard, hard. Umpire says, let me ball it up. 25 and a half minutes gone in the opening term. He was trying to draw the free there, Danger. Yeah, he was trying to protect the space a little bit and end up uh, nearly stuffing it completely up. So Smith engages with Nan Curvis. Centre wing position, members side. Caddy couldn't get a piece of it. Menegola with a handy hip and shoulder. Ball in dispute at the moment. Just the forward favour of Richmond. It's like the Wallabies are there just waiting for the scrum feed to come out. It will not emerge and we'll have a secondary restart. Benny, you got the uh, stoppage numbers there. It just looks like uh, the Tigers are just winning that. They already had 22 stoppages and Cats are winning their hit outs, but they are being beaten in the clearances. Clearance numbers are 10 9 in favour of the Tigers. All right, Selwood had to track it all the way to the boundary. Prestia was with him and he's seen it out of bounds right between the interchange gates. Ball will come back into play. Geelong still without a goal. 26 minutes travel, just the two points. Richmond are 1 3 9. Give where you live. Building a better Geelong. Opening term scoreboard. Zach Smith got it down. Hurried ball from Lambert. Game 50 from him. Finishes with Grimes. He evades the Selwood tackle. That was Joel. Tumble, punt. 52 out. They come from everywhere. No mark. Prestia. Clever little tap into the path of Jackie Boyd. Revolt. Punt road and goes across the face. And waiting there is Dustin Martin who hurries with the ball. Squares it up to Caddy. And Caddy will shoot on goal from 20 metres out. The Cats could not get a handle on that chair in there. Richmond have been pretty consistent winning that ball front and centre off a big contest. Um, and once again, Presti was the first one there. It was just a tap on, but just enough to get in front of Rewop. So Caddy into the Tigers lineup again this week. Former Cat, he's already hit the post. Wait for the roar. Well, there it is. Tigers Army's in town. Geelong, two points. Richmond are 2 3 15. And in wet weather football, they've skipped away to a handy 13 point lead. The Give We Live scoreboard, givewelive.com.au. And now thanks to Goddings, here's Chappie and Lee Brown. That's great selfless footy there from the Tigers. One for Rewalk to put it to the top of the square, even though it went past it. And then one also for uh, Martin to then centre the ball out of front. What it's looking like, Chuck, you spoke about it earlier in the game about the leg speed of the Tigers. Mm. It's actually hurting the cast. They're looking dangerous because of that. They're spreading early from the contest, and they look super fast. Yeah. How many for Camden McIntosh? Benny, he's doing a lot of damage on this wing. Yeah, he's had six touches. Five of those have been effective, and he's gained 162 metres. That's lead, team leading for the Tigers. Back in the middle once again. Tigers with the lead by 13 points. Geelong have not kicked a goal. The Gov phoned us. He said where their goal's going to come from. Well, at the minute, Gov, they're not coming from anywhere. They haven't got one. They've got two behinds. Chappie's comments wholeheartedly agree with it. The way that Richmond are just streaming forward when they break and spread. They're running in waves and numbers. Basher Hooley has got it now for the Tigers. Kicks it to half forward. Bounces off hands. Running through. Might have been Castagna. Bobbly footy. Look at them run here, the Tigers. Snap on goal. Bouncing footy off target. And a minor score, 2-4-16. That was Lambert who kicked it, 2-4-16. Geelong just the two behinds. Almost 29 minutes gone as we close in on quarter time. So Zach Tui getting the rounds of the kitchen. He disposes the ball from the square, but it's going to come back with interest. Hawley, Dustin Martin, looping handball. Lambert gives back to Hawley. Flying to Pat Reid and... Oh, did they push him up? 
ball. Free kick is going to go to Lonergan, who got shoved out of the way with the ball coming towards him. The umpire got conned, Chappie. He did. Dozzy looked at him. It was about three seconds later. Tigers fans not happy. So Lonergan goes to Mackey. A couple of the retirees combining. Last roll of the dice as we head towards quarter time on, for the Cats. On. And his 50 been applied? Oh, what? So why is it play oh. on advantage? So the ball got all the way to centre wing. Now it's got to come back to the 13 who's standing top of the arc. Revolt on the mark and Rioli loitering. Tigers fans have just seen the replay. They're not happy. Umpire took Chap. He was onto it. Yep. Domsey actually gave himself the free kick. And umpire McInerney said, yeah, I think you're right. I'll, I'll go with you. Yep. It was three seconds later. Three man in one. McInerney. And it's now Zach Guthrie. Goes down. The members side, Parfit, as they chance starts from the Tigers. <laughs> They're not happy. Parfit gives to Mackey. Needed to mark that one. Four Tigers around him. Now we've got Cat spreading to the far side. Scott Selwood, 52 out. Little low ball's OK. Marked by Mitch Duncan. And the boos resound Ooh, again. The Tigers not happy. So Mitch Duncan with the ball with a minute to go in this first term. First time they've really switched the ball through the middle, but also lowered the eyes. We spoke uh, pre-game that uh, the Taylor-Rance matchup, if they kept bombing it in, there might be an opportunity to lower their eyes, which would be a better avenue into forward 50. Duncan launches from 49, City end, umpire does oh. not have far to move, Poster. but he watches it, can it into the left hand upright. And the umpire smacks it hard and says, just a point there, Mitch, three points. Geelong, Richmond 2 4 16, give where you live scoreboard. Just uh, watching uh, Dustin Martin there. It looked like Hughes was running with him because Martin had gone forward, but the ball's in the back pocket anyway as Hooley clears it for the Tigers. High elevation, thumping ball back towards Selwood. There's a Joel variety, little chipping ball to Harry Taylor. Inside 50. Now he can go back and should kick Geelong's first goal as we are in the shadows of quarter time. In fact, just 19 seconds left. So what will happen here, I would suggest the siren will sound and Harry Taylor will probably kick for goal after the siren. That's exactly what's going to happen. So it's all important in September, but this is a really important kick because Geelong, as Benny Cass told us, haven't had a scoreless, a goalless term all year. What can the All-Australian defender do? Harry Taylor, 40 out, chips towards goal. It's the post. Believe it or not. Geelong have hit the post twice. They have gone the first quarter without kicking a goal. Richmond are two goals, 4-16. Geelong, four behinds. Get underway in the second term on the Harvey Norman scoreboard. The Cats need a goal, and they need it quickly. Cochin kicked it off the ground. This man's been good. McIntosh out on centre wing, takes a mark on his hands and knees, stands and then he plays on, kicks at the half forward. Big fist from the Geelong defender, Stewart. Happy to see it over the boundary line. Paul Chapman. Boys, one by Kelly. As we expected, Paddy Dangerfield has now gone forward. I think they'll leave the forward 50 open and Grimes is watching him. Yep, good good uh, call, chap. They're going to isolate Danger there. They see if they can snag a couple. We called that game when he was on one leg and he went forward and kicked half a dozen. But the ball is at the wrong end of the ground at the moment because it's the Tigers' end at the City end, and we'll have Just another boundary throw in. A couple of players on the uh, Fags might attend statue for the Cats that struggled. Sam Menegola did not have an effective disposal. Mark Blitzarves didn't have a kick. Jed Buse didn't have an effective disposal. Jake Collardesny, one effective disposal. Tom Hawkins, one effective disposal. So plenty of Cats need to lift on Benny Cass's uh, Fags might attend stat sheet. Boundary throwing again. Dusty in best position. Played it in front of himself. He is a class act. Chipping ball. Not quite long enough, though. Chopped off on the half-back line by Blitzarves for Geelong. He's one of those players that Cass suggested might need a lift. So he's at left half-back. Kicks the ball along the line. Hawkins out in front. Takes a nice chest mark. Yeah, I think Cass needs a few the London fog and lift and emerge. Down the member's side it comes. Rance keeps it forward of the ball. Cochin sharks at ground level. No cats come at him. So he hoists it high down the wing position. Camped underneath it. The uh, president's favourite in Stewart and it bobbled in and out of his chest. Zach Guthrie had to ride the really heavy tackle from Grigg. Was ineffective. Revolt 50 and closing. Loops it over the top and the mark is taken by Caddy. Don't want to put a pin in anyone but that was shocking by Tom Stewart. An easy chest mark. And you can only say, boys, in the back row that have been out there, he must have panicked because there was no one around him. Yeah, no one around him. And 
they just look disorganised in that back 50. Like, Zach Guthrie was a plus one for three stoppages in a row. He's the last player I'd assume that you'd want as a plus one if you're a Geelong defender. So, Zach Guthrie and Stewart, a couple of the youngsters, just combining ineffective at the moment. And Caddy has... Well, I tell you what, is there a magnet out there at the moment in the post? Because that is our fourth poster for the evening. And Josh Caddy slammed it into the right-hand upright. Tigers still lead it by 13 points. And if you've just turned on the 95-5, Geelong yet to score a major. Four points playing 2-5. Correa and uh, Warren Ponds, Harvey Norman. Yep, the Caddy Shacks hit it twice as well. Paul comes back into play, but Gloston at the front of the pack takes a nice contested mark. He's about 60 from goal. Just on the point of the centre square. To give you the orientation, he thumps it high and long. Where's Rewalt? Where's a high flyer? Pack of about 15 form. Ball spills free. Butler was in there for the Tigers. Congested footy. And seriously, you could throw a blanket over 25 of them at the moment. The umpire says, I'll ball it up. 10 metres out from the Richmond goal. See, another one here would really be dangerous for Geelong. If the Tigers can get it, that is Smith. Taps it over his left shoulder. Stewart to make amends. He fumbles again. And the ball goes out of play. So the president's favourite. He's been a bit fumbly tonight. It's a great story. And he's had a very good year from South Barwon Footy Club. Matty Scarlett. Just been... game 19 for Guthrie. It's game 8. So boundary thrown again. Off to Zachary Smith. Took it out of the ruck. Duncan turns out of trouble. Gave it to Joel Selwood. Just a bit slow. to Prestia, 40 metres from goal. Closing speed was fantastic, Chappie. Yeah, it was. It's excellent work. It's great forward pressure that the Tigers have been renowned for. Joel Soward looks like he hasn't played footy for a month. And Townsend came in and pushed him out of the way. So if you've got Townsend giving you a push and shove and you're Joel Selwood, things aren't going well. Tigers are up and about. I can tell you what, I'll let the raw tell you the result. Prestia, drop punt on its way. No raw doesn't give the result. Geelong are lucky that Richmond are off target because they actually, they could be 6-2 and blowing the Cats right out of the water, boys. Instead, they're 2-6-18 to four behinds. And you wonder what mental demons are going to come to play if the Tigers have got it tight in the final term. Blitzarves crashes through with a tackle. No progress, though, and it's hurried back in from Alice, 20 metres out from goal. Stewart, effective punch there. Grigg tried to go off the ground. Buse barred through a few. Castagna intercepted. It went back to Selwood. He smothered again. Edwards was really hot on that. Now a hurried ball from Tui is marked by Tomahawk. Just need to settle it down, Cats. Chappie, what would you be saying if you're out there right now? Yeah, let's just control the ball, make him defend a little bit, boys. No, he wouldn't need to be saying, kick it to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe Menegola was saying that because the Hawk just shorted it up to Sam Menegola. Just his second touch, Menegola. Goes down the members perimeter. Taylor smashes it forward. Shark by Scooter Selwood. Hurry ball by him. The boundary will be the sanctuary here, and it does go out of bounds. And it's 65, 70 metres from Geelong's goal. They're attacking the punt road end, but they trail it 18 to 4. Yeah, 19 inside 50s to 10. They're bordering on doubling the inside 50s of the Cats, uh, the Richmond Footy Club. Zach Guthrie's still your plus one there. We'll get to the boys for Goddings in just a moment, but at half back, that's where Zach Guthrie is standing. Presti up from the ruck, takes it away. Got it towards the boundary, and he's happy to see it out over the chalk line. It'll be a boundary throw in right in front of the Richmond bench. You did well to pick him up, Coz, I must admit. I look when you said that I looked down, he's standing sideways and I couldn't yeah, see him. Yeah, he'll be waiting for the Oz kickers to come out at half time. Ball to come back in. He's out there at least doing it, so credit to him. Collar Jasney got it from Selwood. Centering ball is good. Hawkins. Great kick. Strong lead. Collar Jasney just floated it out in front of him. Did enough, Lee Brown. You like to get on the end of those? Yeah, nice kick inside forward 50. Just lowered the eyes at the last minute there and a nice hit up from, uh, from Tom Hawkins. So the Hawk, this is a vital goal. Well, he hands it off to Tui. We know he's got a long leg. Tui, a mongrel punt. Out of bounds on the full take your pick. Dylan Grimes, Mark, in the back pocket. Terrible result. Why wouldn't Tom Hawk go back and take the responsibility, I'm not sure. That's Chappie. his bread and butter. That's what he gets paid to do. Oh. Yeah, and that's a distance that he's more comfortable from. That was strange. The strangest thing was when he handballed it to Tui, Tui was, like, shocked that he was giving it to him. He was on the wrong side too, Tui. So the ball eventually comes to centre wing where Blitzarves intercepts and takes a mark and sends the Cats back inside 50. Hawkins tries to make amends for that poor hand pass he gave moments earlier off hands and in front of Lambert it goes out of play. So 
on the 50 metre paint. Hawkins had it 50 metres from goal, straight in front. That's where he goes back and buries it, lifts his team. So he was standing still. Yeah, I don't think he certainly wasn't expecting it. It wasn't you, normally a set play, those type of things with a big booming kick, but he wasn't expecting it. Boundary throw in. Selwood down the burrow as he always is, held up in a tackle. And we'll have a ball up. Positive is now, at least it's getting played at the right end of the uh, of the ground. So seven and a half minutes gone in the second quarter on the Harvey Norman scoreboard. Blitzarves grabs it, hustles through the pack, stripped of the footy, Grimes. Got it out the side door. Broad was there. Asprey was a bit slow. Parsons picks it up. Snapped, but he was sort of off balance when he kicked it. Cochin intercepted it on the last line. Comes back to centre half back. Rewalt's got it. Tigers might be out here. Goes towards Edwards. Tries to use his light frame. Couldn't uh, upend his Geelong opponent. Oh, Henderson was awfully slow. Rioli tapped it over to Martin. Martin got a bit cute. Goes again. Ball comes free. Lambert snaps on goal. It's wobbling. It's going towards goal. It misses. She has that pressure that they're bringing the Tigers. Mm, yep. It's phenomenal. For Total Tools, Bucky downstairs. Keep an eye on Parsons. When he went through that contest, he came out really hobbled and he's coming your way, Bucky. Yeah, definitely is uh, with the doctor just coming from the field. Looks like a right, right ankle at the moment. He's actually going to stay on the field. And right oh, Bucky. We'll get to you in a moment. We'll keep an eye on Parsons, but it looked like the Tigers might be having another ping at goal. Edwards is that man. It bounces inside, goes over the top. Tui, last man standing, gets it out to the far side, and Blitzers takes a handy mark. Bucky will come back down now. Yeah, it's definitely a, an ankle just coming from the field. Doctors looking at the moment. Probably restrapped it, totally. Obviously, he came in with an injury. He was injured in the game against GWS. So Murdoch driving ball. He's kicked it to the biggest man out there, Nankervis. Taylor did well to affect the spoil. Motlop couldn't find it at ground level. Now it pops back out. Selwood, little slider hand. Hurried ball from Harry Taylor. Menegola. It is an open forward 50 and Menegola has kicked it straight to Boston. Couldn't have picked him out any better. He was the only man standing there. The Hawk was a couple of metres behind. Gloston said thank you very much. It is four points playing 19. Richmond are in front. I no lack composure. That kick. Oh, Hawley got it high. He might be out. No, he's up and going. Parfit was the man. Parfit was a little late and he got Basher Hawley high. Oh, he's given 50. Oh, he's, a, he's allowed to go for the ball there. Yeah. I think Hawley milked it. So... Maybe looked a little worse than what it was. Chappie was all over it. He came in late. What a just... He got the ball and the ball hit him in the head. It's actually a good play from Parford. Someone need to stand up and put a little bit of physicality into the game. And it's a young kid. He's been pretty good tonight. I love hearing Lee Brown say that. <laughs> Remembering when the 16 was charging around. Yeah, big bad Leroy Brown. Short ball. How many for this man? Is that George? Yeah, Presti, I think. The Presti, was that, it? The that's his 11th touch. Into the pocket. He went towards the big Tiger targets up forward. But Geelong are just desperate at the moment to keep it over the line. And in the meatloaf pocket, we'll have a boundary throw in. Still, 10 minutes into the second term, Cat fans on K-Rock footy. They're four behinds, Geelong. Richmond, 2-7-19. So ball to come back in. A lot of players in that. Oh, they're all up. Forward, left-hand, 50. Revolt. Doing the ruck work. Smith got it down. Tigers almost sharked it. Selwood dispossessed again. Collar Jasney. Hurried handball. Well done, Jed Buse. Just went through some heavy traffic. Got it out towards Hawkins. Now it's Selwood round the corner. Parfit's the man there. He'll probably get the booze. Here they come. Tiger fans have realised who's got it. He launches long and Vloston gets great protection from Rance and takes a handy Hamlin Holmes hanger going back with the ball. Rance did well there. Yeah, he did very well. He did. There was another opportunity for uh, maybe Harry Taylor to um, yeah, put some a body spoil on or something like that, make it more physical. Couldn't do it. Vloston faked to go down the line, then kicked it back to Rance and there, waxing schoolyard style, comes back to Vloston, takes a bounce, top of the arc now. Launches long, down the square. Revolt was up and down before acceptances. Edward was out the back door. Handball. Castagna missed the handle. Tom Zilonigan just got there, nick of time. Now they're having to share it round the middle. And Zach Guthrie, wonderful mark under pressure from Rioli. Yeah, the most composed player at Geelong, unfortunately, right now is a first-year player, Brandon Parford. So Zach Guthrie. Keeps it down the far side. The kick might be OK. Hawkins had a couple of bites of the cherry. Parfit managed to get it at ground level. Long kick down towards Taylor. He and Rance do the dance. Taylor 
just shoveled it back. Bashahuli, though, was the first man there. Broad. Well, Broad's kick was intercepted. Motmok needs to do something. He's 60 from home. Blitzabs is running into the square. Kiana Blitzabs, he's six foot six. Now Motmok puts the eyes up, kicks it. Smith is there. He can't bring it down to ground. 30 metres out from the Cats' goal. They climb on in over the top. No free kick being paid. Selwood's lurking there. Couldn't quite get it off Harry Taylor. Ball being scrummed forward by the Cats at the moment. Dangerfield, couple of blind turns and then threw it out. Genuinely threw it. Wasn't called. And the Tigers managed to get a relieving kick. Buzel marks centre wing. No, he won't. Spilled the ball. Cavalry arrives in the form of Lonigan. Little squaring ball from him's OK. Oh, Collar Jasney put it down. There's all sorts of implied pressure out there, boys. Collar Jasney waxes oh. the old one two. In the end, they've mucked it up. Zach Guthrie stands. Handball's back towards Lonigan. They're tackling hard, the Tigers. Selwood, Scooter, Collar Jasney. He'll see it out of bounds. Oh. Tigers want a free kick, and they get one. So impressive, Richmond. So desperate. How is the pressure? Martin's got it now. We'll go to the boys in the back row in the minute because they're nodding their head as play moves on. Martin kicks it to centre-half forward for the Tigers. Geelong are under enormous pressure. Still haven't kicked a goal. Players crash in from everywhere and the umpire will ball it up. Lee Brown, Paul Chapman. Tigers are ferocious. They are ferocious. Coach will be proud. Fans are no doubt proud and haven't really been renowned for their pressure around the ball, but they're just playing better finals footy, better wet weather footy. 37 tackles apiece. Inside 50s, 21-14 in favour of the Tigers. Fumbly, Geelong. Fumbly. Even Dangerfield's fumbling, if you believe that. Prestia picks it up. He hasn't fumbled too much. Wasn't a great kick. Triples over the boundary line. Ford Pocket. 2-7-19. Richmond, if you've just joined us, been out for dinner. What are the Cats doing? Not much. Four behinds. We played 14 minutes in the second quarter in this qualifying final. Remember the winner through to the prelim. The loser to take on either Essendon or the Swans. Decided tomorrow afternoon. K-Rock footy covering that one. Dangerfield, desperate to try and inject himself in the game. Oh, the best don't argue in the business. He picks it up, Dustin Martin onto his right boot, sends it forward. Mackey back with the flight of the ball. Takes a really nice defensive mark on the last line. 14 and a half minutes gone, Koza. Still no Geelong goal. The experience of Mack there, vital. He kicked towards Smith, couldn't take the mark. Tigers now. Dustin Martin just gets rid of Motlop with another don't argue. The handball got to Vlosten. Now back into the heart of the MCG. Broad has to get rid of it quickly. Cats have started tackling. And right in the double donuts. It's a free kick though against Motlop and Scott Selwood for being a little bit high on Dylan Grimes. It's a good call though. Much better pressure from the Cats. Yep. So Grimes shorts it out to Broad. James Parsons has put the track suit top on. Don't know if that's good news or not for Cats fans. Mm. No, not ideal. So we'll wait and find out. So Parsons on the interchange bench. Basha Hawley receives it from Broad. Still in the square. Now he gets it on the left peg. There is a Tiger standing out there all by themselves. It was Prestia, smallest Tiger out there. They didn't see him in the right-hand forward pocket. Rioli with a chance. He's dispossessed. 20 metres out from goal. It might be round the corner. Geelong, four points. Harvey Norman, Carrillo and Warren Ponds. If you're watching a TV from there and listening to the K-Rock radio call, you might just be throwing something at it at the moment. Geelong, four points. Richmond, 3-7-25. 15 minutes gone, second term. It's that pressure in the front half from Richmond. They're doing it with plus two or three behind the ball, so they're still keeping their defensive structure and their back six in place, but the pressure from that Mosquito fleet, in particular in that front half of the ground, has been outstanding. Uh, the uh, Shogun, Shogun Concrete Twitter, Cats 2007, said, Cats seem to be trying hard, which is what my report said when I kept failing. <laughs> <laughs> and back in the middle, Zach Smith tapped it to himself. Went to Menangolu, dropped a chest mark. It's amazing how many mistakes Geelong players have made tonight. 
chest marks being dropped and fumbling the footy. It's the opposite to what we expected. We thought the Tigers might have been a little nervy in the first quarter or so. It's it's Geelong that are the nervous team at the moment. Guthrie puts his head over the footy. Held up. Can he get it free? He does. Collar Jasney grabs it. Onto his right boot. Snapping ball. Goes inside 50 for Geelong. Back of the pack. Asprey didn't want to pick it up. He just tapped it forward. Is that Parsons? No, it's Murdoch back on the field. It is Parsons. I thought he was off with the tracksuit top on. Bucky reported to me. I'm confused. Boundary line. Bucky, did he whip the tracksuit off very quickly? Yeah, when that goal was scored by Butler, he put the tracksuit top off. He doesn't look great. He actually sprinted for that one, but he's been hobbling up and down the boundary line for about five minutes. Looks like an old man at the moment, James Parsons. 3 7 Dr. Bombay. 3 7 25, Richmond. Geelong, 17 minutes gone in the second term. Still yet to kick a goal. Will they get one in the first half of footy? Kick from Presti, who's been good, not so good that time out of bounds on the full. Need to cash in now, the Cats, with yep. Zach Smith in the ruck against Sean Grigg. This is the time where they can get on top. Voice of Lee Brown, Premiership player with the Magpies. Ford from Selwood, Rance. Sort of fisted it forward. Ellis hasn't had a lot of it. Kicks a high up and under ball. Men and goal. It grabs that one, but it didn't go the required distance. Chicken wing. Umpire said, I'm sorry. Gone, you gone, gone, gone. He looks really sort of edgy at the moment, Men and goal. He's been very good the last few weeks, but off the boil tonight. That moment's just changed. Dan Curvis has come back on too late. So, short ball from Lambert. Goes towards the man that Koza was talking about, Nan Curvis. Blitzarves sort of got caught behind him. Nice little give by Lonigan to Duncan. Here's a chance for Geelong. This is their best chance. Menengola drills it towards Taylor. Couldn't hold the mark. Ranch was desperado stuff. Guthrie picks it up. Look at the pressure by Richmond. They are ferocious from Tiger Land. They win another free kick. So impressed with the Tigers. Total tools downstairs. Heath Buckerick and Jordan Murdoch going to be your next patient. He's hobbling your way at the moment. He's trying to cover the Tigers. Right, Carl, keep an eye on him. Dr. Bombay just running the uh, hospital ward down the stairs at the moment. Heath Buck for total tools, every tool, every trade as the Tigers go far side of the ground and ball goes out of bounds. Murdoch looks in a fair bit of pain, actually. I'll tell you what, lost stone, Benny. Bags more to 10. He's just holding that defence beautifully down there for the Tigers. Yeah, he's had 11 possessions. Nine of those have been effective. Presti is up to 14. Martin's had 12. Lonigan, the leading possession winner for the Cats, and Tui with 12 apiece, both playing in the back half. Fags might to 10. Great garden specials all weekend at Fags might to 10. Cochin looping handball. Lambert game 50 just had it spent before he actually had the pill. Martin's gone, it's gone out of bounds. Isolated with Tom Stewart. Total tools. Uh, Jordan Murdoch's just uh, shook the trainers off. He's staying out on the ground, boys. Okay, well, he's hobbling at the moment. Parsons is hobbling. Cats cannot buy a goal. It is four points playing 3-7. Tigers just in control, and they decamp again from the middle. Katia don't argue. Lambert game 50. He gives to that one-on-one that Chuck was talking about. Stewart did well. Managed to neutralise the contest. Martin ran hard towards the right-hand forward pocket. Taken down to ground. He's trying to hatch an umpire. Umpire says we're not paying a free kick against Dusty. He's, he's done well there to uh, not allow that ball just to roll over for a behind. They've got another opportunity now, Richmond. Yeah, mate. So Martin did really well there. Ball will be elevated. Right forward pocket, members side of the ground. 3-7 Richmond. Just the four points, the Cats. Ben, you might have to go to the record books again and find out the first last half. goalless first half for Geelong. Yeah, well, I'm back to 93. Wow. Keep working your way through. Blitz halves. Well, no one went up against him. Caddy just really sagged off. Prestia down low. Tried to get it to Martin. Stewart intercepted. Martin wrapped him up in the tackle. And Dusty just throws the kegs all over the top of Stewart, the kid from South Barwon. And it's a secondary bounce in the right forward pocket. Boys, I think it's time to put Dangerfield forward of the ball and just leave him one out. They did try that, but it didn't last too long. He's not really given that much around the contest at the moment. He's not at this stage. Blitzhavs go out one-handed, comes down towards Guthrie. Hurried ball from Zach Guthrie to Cam Guthrie. Basher Hooley couldn't quite mark. Nankervis bent down to pick it up. It's on the 50 numerals members' side. Stacks on the mill, and it will be a bounce. The Tigers by 21 points with five and a half to go in the second term. Harvey Norman, Carayo and Warren Ponds, two great locations. Furniture, betting, electrical and computers. Yeah, there hasn't been a lot of change-up from Geelong. I agree with Chad. Oh, one off the ball down. there. So a free kick. Who was it that went down? Young Parfit? In the middle, or was it... Yeah, he just copped a bit of a hit in the back. Parfit. I don't know whether it was... He was sort of not really watching, and the 
Tigers cannon into him. Not a lot in it, but... Well, it's hard to watch behind you. Just a free kick it is, boys. Yep. Yep, no half back more. line. Tigers defence set up nice here. They've set up the zone, blocking all the space, forcing Geelong out wide to Mackey on the boundary line in front of the MCC members. He'll drop punt it to half forward, looking for a high flyer. None of those coming for Geelong. Fumbly footy again. Hawkins picks it up, trying to impose himself. Murdoch, who he thinks on one leg, applies the tackle. Umpire says, I'll ball it up. Just down in front of our man, Heath Buck. They can't get danger on the ground at the moment, Bucky. The rotations aren't working. Uh, Zach Guthrie came on, but danger's just still waiting to come on, boys. So ball up in the air again. No one with a decisive tap. Duncan was good. Menangola run back into traffic instead of out of trouble. Dribbly ball to half forward. Geelong just structures and system. Paul Chapman, Lee Brown, nothing seems to be working for them at the moment. No, it's a, it's a good call, Chuck. They're just kind of, I think they've... Um just a little lost at the moment, they are. They're just kind of worrying a little bit about themselves more so than their teammates. Boundary throw in, free kick from that, and it's going to Richmond. It was a 50-50, but Dan Curvis has got it. Been so impressed with his season, Coza. And 3-7, playing just the four points. Well, I think Curvis, if my numbers are correct, last time, and I'm stand to be correct on this, last time Geelong did not kick a goal, the first half of a game was round 9, 1964. 1964. I, maybe, I just had a quick scan, so I can't yeah. be 100%, but my quick scan says it's been 50 years. And I think Ford had just upgraded the production line from T-Model Fords at that stage. As, oh. oh, Stewart has a howler. The kick intercepted by Caddy, who just removes a couple of cats and then fires it down. And a contender for Hamlin Holmes' hanger is Jackie Boy Revolt. Views arrived just a little late, couldn't affect the spoil. Revolt's height angle. Tigers will go berserk here if Revolt kicks this. Do you reckon Colin Carter might be finding a new favourite player? No. He's, had a, he's had a couple of howlers tonight. He actually needs to go in at halftime, have a shower, put the kit back on and uh, refresh again. and start again. Yeah. OK, so Revolt. With the LED signs at his back, starts the march towards the goal. He'll kick from 49. They'll go eight droppings if he kicks this. They will up. completely go gorilla as Revolt. He just tried to nurse it across the goal face. Mark not taken down there. Cats through Collar Jasny. Just dodge a little bullet. It's a hurry oh. ball. Big clash, danger field. They went hard at it, and Ellis, the Tigers come to Ellis. Look at that. No one goes to Dangerfield. What's going on with the Cats out there at the moment? It because says, the says Tigers are up and about. Chappie, talk us through that mentality. Yeah, that says so much. It's respect for what your teammate does. And, you know, you go over and pat him on the bum, and he's going to go and do it again. Plus, these other teammates want to do it as well. Big collision. Ball went out of bounds. No one came to Dangerfield. They were up and about for Ellis, but the 35's got it. Long, raking ball. One-on-one. -on -one. Taylor and Rance wrestle. In the end, Rance tries to shovel it out the back door. Hawkins arrives. Oh, tries oh. a one-handed Cooper Cronk arrangement that does not work. That's a genuine throw. <laughs> and the Hawk just couldn't really find the handle. Didn't have the fingertip touch, and it's a free kick to the Tigers inside the back 50. Geelong yet to score a goal. Four points playing 25. So Alex Rance, the recipient of the free kick, goes to centre wing. The big tall man, Curvis, elevated and took a nice mark onto his left boot. Kicks a low ball out wide. Pretty good ball user for a big fella, isn't he? He yeah. is. He's been a revelation for them. So he found Lambert out on centre wing for the Tigers. Scissor kick. He kicks it to half forward. Cats with the numbers and the smallest, thinnest man out there. In fact, Zach Guthrie takes a nice mark for Geelong. Not such a great kick. Sort of kicked towards the centre square. Motlop hasn't done much. Maybe this time gives a handball to Menangola. Kick's really important. Bounce in front of Harry oh. Taylor. Will it sit for Tui? It wobbled. He got the handball back to Motlop. He must kick this. He must kick this. And he does. Geelong are on the board finally. 25 and a half minutes gone in the second term. And the Cats get their first goal. They're 1-4-10. Richmond, who have dominated for mine, a 3-7-25. Boys, they're only leading by 15 points. I kid you not, I spent three days looking for that stat. <laughs> and I pressed send on Twitter as that ball was in the air. 
<laughs> Goodness uh, gracious me, what a waste of time. Yeah, some people are winners in life, some people are losers, <laughs> Benny. Stiff as your own back. And oh. that is the way. The old honeymoon style, that. That was unbelievable. Hey, boys, we just spoke about uh, Guthrie's kick into the middle and how dangerous it was, but at least they're trying to use the middle of the ground. That's why they got that goal. It opened it up, and you know what? The Cats aren't done yet. The Cats are not done. It's been a staggering opening half, but the Cats aren't done. Tigers... With the ball going forward, two intercepted. Scott Selwood, couple of cool heads there. Now to Mitch Duncan. Great form from him this season. They go back through Scott Selwood. Duncan's the release player. Far side of the ground. Little low one, and he speared it too low. McIntosh marks. He'll send it back. Untidy kick, though. Martin made it look okay. Gave to Caddy. Little low ball from him. He's excellent. Revolt marks. Long lead. Ben gets a shot in the back. They want 50. Revolt says, I'm just going to launch it. I'm going to launch it into the goal square. Cats get across in numbers and just managed to get it out of bounds. And Henderson was that man. So out of bounds, right forward pocket. Do you know what? It's only 25 playing 10. I know the Cats have been so out of sorts, but we know they're a battle-hardened team. Not all is lost. The way we've called the game, Coase, you'd, you would think Richmond were sort of eight goals well, in front. Well, they should be. 3-7. They're only 15 points in front. If somehow the Cats can snare the next goal and go into half time, it's an even contest, really. Blitzhard's got it in the back pocket. I reckon Richmond will be disappointed, uh, Brownie, that they're actually not further ahead on the scoreboard. Yeah, they, they would have used a lot of energy too, Chuck, to get to this point yep. in the game with all that pressure. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how they bounce out in the second half. The inside 50 count, 27-18 in favour of the Tigers. Inside the final minute of the first half of footy, Dustin Martin picks it up, kicked it sort of off his shin and it tripled over the boundary line. So with 50 seconds left in the first half of footy, finally Geelong are on the board with a goal. They're trailing by 15 points, but as we've just said, they're still in touch very much with the contest. Boundary throw in. Tigers would dearly love another late one here. And then Curvis grabbed it out of the ruck, threw it onto his right foot. That was smothered. Dustin Martin goes back onto the footy with his left boot, wobbly footy, bouncing in front of Tui, tried to smother it, did well. Second effort was good, got it to Smith. Don't think there's enough time. He wobbled it back into the middle and Broad sat underneath it for the Tigers. 30 seconds, that's all that's left. So the kick's important. It's a short ball, chopped off by Guthrie. Coaster's yelling in my ear or pointing. Move it. He goes for the torpedo to half forward. Back of the pack. Parsons off the ground with Harry Taylor. Wobbly ball. Won't have enough legs to make it. Along the ground, Rance diving. Got a handball to Grimes. Grimes will settle for the Tigers, and that might be the last play. Or will it? The kick went to Selwood. Selwood to Dangerfield. Dangerfield! have expelled so much energy in that half of football and right on the siren the Geelong superstar keeps them in the game we have a ball game Geelong at 2-4-16 Richmond 3-7-25 and thanks to Subway Fresh 16 Geelong, 25 Richmond here's Chuck Halls. Yep, Big Smith and Nan Curvis they sort of jostle for position, Smith wins the tap down, Dangerfield held up in a tackle, Smith tries to crash his way through the pack. He actually handballed to a Richmond player and then it's knocked out of his hands. Players crash in from everywhere. Caddy was one of those. Then a high ball goes to centre half forward. Fist on the footy. Mackey at the fall of it. Dived over the top of it. He's going to have to get it out. Rewalt fights with him. Umpire says, I'll ball it up. A couple of Wombat Gully matchups. I can tell you, Heath Buck is matched very closely with Abby Holmes at boundary side. There hasn't <laughs> been a lot between the two of those all night down there, to be honest. Cigarette paper. Very, very close and tense. It's a bit cold tonight. Just keep that down, Chuck. She's right next to me. She can hear every word you're saying. <laughs> I had the binoculars on you at halftime, Buck. You know, tell you what, that was sort of Mickey Gafer type of stuff, that was. Yeah, Louise is listening. Shush. Yep. No, were you just doing your job, Bucky? It's a full house tonight, so there's nowhere to move. I'll get back to the footy, Bucky. You concentrate as well in case there's any total tools coming out down there. Mackey, handball over the top to Dangerfield on centre wing. Down in front of Heath Buck, diving. Nice mark by Tom Hawkins. Centre wing position, wastes no time as he gets to his feet. Ellis in the set mark was beautiful. Beautiful stuff. He aimed it at Selwood, did Hawkins, but it was chopped off by Ellis. He goes to Prestia, one of the best of field. Handball to Basher. Hooley, his hand pass was Aaron and allowed Mackey in, Rioli applied the tackle, Ben told us Rioli didn't get a kick in the first half of footy ball up Conditions down here, perfect boys, uh, that rain that we had in the first quarter's gone and uh, 
The ground is pretty dry now, so expect good conditions after half time. Mackey's going to know he's had a night. He's matched up against Daniel Rioli, who's had the wheels in motion. Now Mack gets the ball from Mott Lop. In the end, the kick from Mack was terrible, though. Went along the ground. Edward Shark that dropped it to within 20 metres out from goal. No mark taken. There's Rioli. Free space. Wonderful goal saving tackle. That was Blitzhaps, but they managed to launch long. Henderson, last line, will see it out of bounds. Rioli's giving. Uh, Mackie, a bit of a run at the moment, boys. Yeah. Boys, just a few uh, Wombat, Wombat Galley matchups. We've got Dangerfield on Cochin, Salwood's playing on Prestia, and Mitch Duncan's gone to Martin. So, ball to come back into play. Caddy matched up on Stewart. It's been dangerous, has Caddy, the former cat. Total tour is not good news for the Cats fans. Cam Guthrie, straight down to the rooms. Okay, mm. cool. Keep an eye on that. In the end, the ball has been ricocheted off Henderson's boot and gone through for a point. Dustin Martin almost went up in the ruck against Smith, who was unopposed, so it's another point. Tigers now lead it by 10 points, 26 playing 16. Tui, short ball into Stewart, who had a howler in the first half. He marks it just only about 15 metres from goal. No one further afield, so he squares the ball short to Henderson. Possessing the footy, the Cats, another short pass to Buse. So three kicks, and they're still still inside the defensive 50. Geelong, another short ball. Maybe this is a tactic. They're just not going to cough up the footy. They're going to try and use it around the ground. The blitz halves now. Four kicks, and now they're outside defensive 50. He kicks a long ball eventually to centre wing. Numbers with the hoops. Motlop picks it up, needs to put the burners on. Kicks it to half forward. Harry Taylor went up. He's been pretty quiet tonight. Outpointed that time by a smaller opponent in Ellis. That's twice he's come off his opponent, Ellis, yeah. and um, intercepted and, and helped out. Voice of Paul Chapman, former Geelong champ. Great to have him on K Rock this year with us. He's playing on Parsons, who's had one effective disposal for the game. Boundary throw in again. That was the voice of Benny Cass giving you the fags, might of 10. Stat Selwood, he tried to crash through the pack. Like a wrecking ball he was. It spilt free out the side of the pack. Smith, the big tall man, couldn't bend down. Eventually in the meatloaf pocket, it goes over the boundary line. Four minutes has elapsed in the third quarter for Subway. Eat fresh, wouldn't mind a Subway right now. Boundary throwing Tigers by 10 points in a low-scoring tussle at the moment, Koza. Motlop's out the back door here if they can work it that way. Hawkins put his hand up to go in the ruck, and in the end, he and Blitzhavs ended up confused. So now Curvis sharked it and kicked it along the boundary. Smith, who is a genuine ruckman, was out there and managed to fumble it out of bounds. So just not quite working there, that ruck combination. The old Zachy Smith, he looked like he was slower than the old bread wagon with the biscuit wheels there. He was, wasn't exactly moves, glacial sort of stuff. Nan Curvis oh, smashes it forward, bought 10 metres out that near the boundary is Prestia, moves it along another 10 metres, so a forward of centre wing still on the outer side, the ball will come back in, Tigers lead at 26 playing 16. Opening four minutes, Chappy, just a bit of a slower pace to the game than the first half at the moment. Yeah, there's no doubt they use a lot of energy in the first quarter, they're just filling each other out again So Smith and then Curvis engage, Dustin Martin was dispossessed, Selwood went through, tackled high by Hooley had to get rid of the ball, no free kick. Now it's Menegola and Cochin in a bit of a wrestle. Comes back towards Selwood, he cracks in as well. Basher Hooley tries a hurried little kick. In the end, Tui just tries to stop the progress. Nankervis cracks over the top of him. Cats under duress, and now Mitch Duncan got it away. Motlop, quick hands, goes to Selwood, to Scooter Selwood. Over the top, Murdoch was the target, tackled immediately by Grimes. Ball fills free, Grigg picks it up, high up and under ball, on the far side of the ground, and Smith, camped on the AFL logo, takes a chess mark. So Smith wants a terrible tumble punt into the forward line. Scooter Selwood almost made it look good. Couldn't bring the ball down to ground level, though. Murdoch over the top. In the end, Lambert intercepted. Got it to Grigg. His left peg's normally pretty good. Kicks it to the advantage of Revolt, and it tumbles out of bounds. Was that deliberate? The umpire says, no, we're going to have a boundary throw-in. Cold conditions. Rain could be pending as well. Total Just... tools. Um, Kaiser Guthrie's come back from the room. Just trying to work out exactly what's wrong with him because he seems to be... Looks like a calf. Ice on the calf for uh, for Cam Guthrie. That's uh, that's a real big concern. Yeah, not a good sign. Boys in the back row. Ice on an injury during game normally means all over, doesn't it? Yeah, Brownie? not a good sign at all. But uh, Geelong has started this half, Chappy, really well. They're getting some good numbers around the ball. Their front and centre work's been uh, much better. So they've actually... Uh, 
play some decent footy now. Trailing by 10 points. That's the voice of Lee Brown for Godding. Special comments, Lee Brown and Paul Chapman tonight. Two of the finest on K-Rock footy. And I think there's a free kick coming back. Lambert was off to the races, but the Just free kick... Obviously trying to arrest those contested possessions, which they were nearly minus 20 in that first half. The Cats, so they're eight to six in the early going of this third term in the contested possession stakes. Inside 50, they've only had 20 inside 50s, Geelong. Duncan was the one that got the free kick. He went to Motlop, but they sort of clumsily going through the middle. It was a good pass, that one. It found Mackey. He wants to move it quickly. Taylor's in good position to elevate. Back of the pack. Couldn't oh. hold the mark. Hawkins kicked it off the ground. In the pocket. Parsons snapping ball. Basher Hawley double fisted through for a rush behind. He dived desperately and forced it through for a minor score to Geelong. Richmond are 3 8 26. The Cats 2 5 17. So the margin as it was at half time, nine points, but we've played seven and a half minutes in this third quarter. Hooley brings it back in. Members side. Caddy the marking target. Townsend, who's been quiet. No one can mark at this stage. Buse, wonderful tackle. Made Edwards spill the ball. Stewart back in there again. But ejects out towards Cochin. He can't keep it in the boundary and it will go out of bounds. Members side. Just forward of centre wing for the Cats at trail by just a goal and a half. Mitch Duncan, the leading tackler for the Cats at the moment with seven. Scott Sower just has four, usually up near double figures. Dangerfield has had four and Jed Buse, who later tackled there, has had six. Duncan, one of six Cats that played every game last season. Couldn't get the ball away on that occasion. In the end, Metagola came through, slammed it on the boot. They need a mark. Right hand forward pocket. Hawkins went back with it. Ground level. Pass to the goal square. Needs to kick it down. Well done, Hawkins. A contender for GMHBA goal of the night because it's been so rare. Parsons on the board. Hawkins made it happen. Caused the spillage. Got the handball out. And the Cats now trail by three points. Geelong 3 5 23. Richmond 3 8 26. Subway eat fresh. Craig Goddard and the team. 15 stores across Geelong. It's been a really good call from you, Brownie. They've actually come out and, and really, you know, tried to get their game going. It's what they're trying to do when they've got the ball as well is just hit up that um, that bloke a little bit shorter and force Richmond to have to actually defend a man. And uh, that was well done then by Hawkins to get across to Parsons, but also from the young man to um, show some composure and actually let the traffic go past him before he stuck it on the boot. The skipper's wheeled himself into the contest as well, Selwood. A couple of hard contests early in this second half. Three points in this qualifying final. So much at stake. A week off and a preliminary final for the winner tonight. And one of those um, hard contests from the skipper, Brandy, for Total Tools. As many as come from the field with some blood on his nose. Yeah, he's had three touches in this third term. Selwood, Motlop's had four and Duncan has had four. Another ball up in the middle. Two, he runs onto the footy. Quickly onto his right boot. Wobbly footy bouncing at half forward. Hawkins comes out with Asprey to meet it off the ground. Oh. Will it be deliberate? Umpire Simon Overland yes. says yes. In my police commissioner days, that was deliberate. Free kick against you. Hawkins drills it low into the pocket. Menangola can't keep it in. He tripped over the boundary line, in fact. And the umpire says, ball it in. 30 around from the cat goal. Nervous times for the Tiger fans. Yeah, they'll be twitching a little bit now. They definitely had the better of the first half. And we all said they should have been further in front. They left the door ajar. And we know the Cats... They've been here before. Dangerfield's been there before. From that stoppage, he wobbles one towards goal. Bounces important. Taylor hustles off hands in the end and through for a minor score. Slowly but surely, Brownie, they edge closer. Two points separate the teams. This third term, it's been four, a four inside 50s to one in favour of the Cats. Lawson, D-Camp's member's side. Castagna elevates, can't mark it. Boundary line will be the winner. Zach Guthrie sees it out here in Rioli. It's like a little featherweight sort of bout, that one, isn't it? <laughs> little bantamweight sort of arrangement, <laughs> Koza. You wouldn't be in one of those. No, heavyweights, more Conor McGregor, my style. Uh, ball to come back in. How long do you reckon I'd last with Conor McGregor? I don't think you'd actually get into the ring. About eight seconds. 
No, not like you, Benny. You won all your fights by 100 metres. Ball comes back in the Cats' favour. They can't get it away. Selwood, strong tackle. Ball taken down to ground. And the stoppages are working at the moment for the Cats. Just off the charge in concrete Twitter, Ben at the Cattery suggesting Parsons' goal, not unlike Chappie 09 GF. <laughs> Standing in the goal square, not dissimilar. That went off the guy lying on the ground, which was Nankurvis. Yeah, spotted, I reckon. And it, he went to kick it. It went over the pack and out of bounds on the full danger field. Said, I'll have the kick, and in the end, had to handball it back to Scott Selwood. So, genuine opportunity. Cats trail by two points. They kick a goal here, and they are in front. Scooter into the hot spot. Smith couldn't mark. Numbers with the Tigers. They get it out boundary side. Ellis will see it out of bounds. That's what he wants. In the end, it doesn't get that way. Colin Jesney got nutmeg. Zach Guthrie just applied a little handball back to Colin Jesney. Round the corner goes Murdoch. It'll bounce. It'll pitch. It'll land in the goal square. And Blitzhouse almost kicks a miracle goal being held. Just got boot to ball. It's a point. We are back to a one-point ball game at the MCG. 25 playing 26. Well, this is where the Tiger faithful need to make some noise. Not when you're in front. They've gone a bit quiet, the yeah, Tigers. definitely quiet down here, Chuck. And the Cats fans are up and about at the moment. Just bit making of, all the noise. Downhill skiing in the yellow and black. Yeah, they need to stand now and urge their team. I said at the start of the quarter, this is such a crucial game in the context of this season as Menengola picks it up, dumped. Umpire said, ball it in. It's been all the Cats in this third term. 39 disposals to 20, 6 inside 50s to 1. Importantly, they've won the clearances 7 to 2 and contested possession 16-10. So all the stats that were against them in that first half are going in favour of the blue and white in the opening going of this third term. Slowly it's turning. The Cats, for the second time, don't actually have a Ruckman in the contest. Nankurva tapped it forward. Men and goal are rushed his kick. It went up and down. No, it didn't go any further forward for the Cats. Scooter Selwood charges in. Held up in the tackle, though. Richmond just look a little bit tired to me after being so... Well, Brownie said it. They expelled so much energy in the first half. At the minute, just at the minute, in the last 10 or so minutes of play, they're a little flat-footed. Up it goes again. Van Curvis wins it, but the Cats first of the footy. Blitzars feeds a handball to Scooter Selwood. Drop punts at a low one in towards Hawkins. Off the pack. Front of the pack it was. Dangerfield slung. Got it to Parfit. Parfit sidesteps Campisi style. Squaring ball to set oh! And the way for Thin Guthrie takes a mark. 35 metres out directly in front. Zach Guthrie's never kicked a goal in his eight-game career. How good was that from Parfit? Yeah, Van Inken, step. he sold candy. Yeah. Three Tigers yeah. got their credit cards out. Yeah. The Allen's factory went out of business. Oh, that was a glimpse of what that kid's capable of. He's been one of the Cats' best players. He's looked calm, too, in that first half when he's seen your teammates were fumbling. Guthrie not man, kicked a goal. A man in just his eighth game of league football came into the team tonight. Kicks a drop punt, and he misses to the right-hand side. That was your moment, young man. Boys, 3-8-26 Geelong, 3-8-26 Richmond. It's amazing to think we're already into the third term. So Guthrie levels the scores. Tigers with the ball far side. Cats are now tackling in numbers. They emerge. Here's Motlop. Afterburners on. Low ball intercepted by Edwards. Nice read of the play from the 10. Marked in front of Murdoch. Oh, little one over to Prestia, who's the smallest Tiger out there height-wise. He gives to Broad. Broad continues progress to the members' side and Rance marks. Furthest he's been up the ground. Gets it round the corner. Jackie Boy revolt. Strong mark. Scooter Selwood. Mark not paid. Richmond fans will say, come on. Lonigan throws him out over the boundary. Revolt says to the umpire, that was absolutely a mark. Yeah, that was a poor decision. Prestia and Lambert are doing well for the Tigers in this third turn. They had seven touches between them. So ball to come back in right in front of the Richmond bench. 3-8 apiece. Cats have clawed their way back into this contest. Blitzabs and Grigg go at it. Selwood being held. Ball comes back in favour of the Tigers. Grigg goes high off the ground. They need to camp underneath it. Duncan did well. Punched it forward. Hooley, best position. Left peg from him. It's an open forward line. Here come the numbers. Henderson just brought it down to ground level. Stewart. Revolt went off the ground. Oh, wrong side of the pole. 
Oh, that would have been your GMHBA goal of the night. Tigers in front by that slender margin. It's a point. Subway at Fresh, 15 stores across Geelong. Important the Tigers lock this ball in now. It's been down the other end for a fair while. They need to keep it in their front half. Two, he kicks it to himself and plays on Brownie. Then he clears defensive 50. Brownie calls for the Tigers to keep it in. Edwards hustles hard. Basha Hooley's been pretty good. Had his left arm held onto. He couldn't get rid of the footy because Guthrie applied the tackle. Paul Chapman in the back row. Yeah, boys, very obvious that uh, the Cats have stepped it up. They're a lot harder around the contest, but the thing that stands out for me is they're a lot cleaner now. All of a sudden, the Tigers are starting to get a little bit fumbly. It's all starting to get a little bit too hard. Momentum shift perhaps in the game. Up it goes. Blitzarves in the ruck. And he roves it. Throws it onto his right boot. Loston's been good. Goes back with the flight. Takes a mark on centre wing for the Tigers. It's a good play of Lawson, is he? Really yeah. come into his own former first round pick. It's his 14th touch. He's hit the target with nearly all 14. Kicks it back to where it came from. Rewald edged underneath the footy. Lonigan, maybe on the second bite. Umpire said no. No one tries to get it out. So the umpire says, I'll ball it up. Lee Brown. You mentioned Vlosten there, Benny. Hughes has actually gone forward and uh, looks like he's playing a role on him at the moment. Yeah, well, he's been probably one of the Tigers' best. Just getting in the way as he did there. He's done that five or six times tonight. And Jed Buse up in the forward 50 at the moment. Blitzavs couldn't get it away from the ruck. Cochin could. His handball low was straight to Selwood. Scooter, he was tackled by Martin. Cochin butted up again. Over the top to Edwards. 15 out. He just simply couldn't find a bobbling ball. Shorts it up. Stewart intercepted. Kicks back side of the ground. Parsons and Broad. Foot race out there. Broad. Just gets around Parsons okay. Low ball is good and a wonderful mark by Butler. That was at pace. Butler launches. Hot spot 20 metres out from goal. Here comes Rebolt. Couldn't mark it. Scooter Selwood. Handball. Tui. Beset by Tigers. They take him down to ground. And it will be a bounce. 30 metres out. Tigers. Punt road end. It's been down there a couple of minutes. Obviously, the Cats down one rotation with Cam Guthrie out with a calf injury. He's obviously not returning to this game. Blitzavs brings it into the corridor. Stewart cleaner there. Got it to Henderson. Now Lonigan. Domsey steps around a couple. Fires it down centre wing. Rance is the first man, though, in front to react. Low ball from Rance. No real target. Stewart! Oh! Hamlet Holmes hanger! He bobbled it around a couple of times. It went between Dustin Martin's hands and Stewart picked it up again. And now he's turned it over to Rioli. Rioli, 52 out. It'll be too far for Rioli. It'll be too far, I would suggest, the journey. Chappie, you're going to back him in from here? No, nah, I don't think you'll make the journey. I would have loved to see him give that one off to Edwards a little bit earlier. He would have had a shot on the same angle. Oh. He's doing it now. OK, short ball. Tom Stewart's having an absolute howl there, boys. While you were talking, Koza, yep. he, he made the mistake with the kick, right? Titch Edwards run forward and then doubled back, and Tom Stewart just got lost. And Patrick Dangerfield having a fair bit to say down on the bench, boys, about not being able to get back on the ground, really pointing his finger and shaking his head at the, at the rotation man down here on the bench. OK, well, it hasn't worked a couple of times for them. So Edwards got the ball hard on the boundary, though. Not necessarily a noted goal kicker. 15 last season. He's bending it left to right. A couple of Tigers got up high, couldn't mark it. Tigers now lead it by two points. So Cats have not been in front at all. The scores no. were levelled when Guthrie, Zach, kicked a behind. Stewart's now getting the rounds of the kitchen from Tigers fans. Yeah, I'm not sure I'd have the ball in his hands at the moment. He kicks it back in. Two Geelong players run underneath it. Men and goal has been lost all night. Greek takes the mark, goes up. Left footer, he's going to send them back inside 50. Pack forms. Up they go. Henderson was in there for Geelong. Front of the pack. Tigers with the footy, Townsend it was. He tried to feed the handball to Edwards, missed his target out of bounds, 35 around. So Dangerfield, boys, finally back onto the field, uh, replaced Mitch Duncan straight down to this stoppage. Yeah, they've had five of the, the last five inside 50s, the Tigers. They've, they've just arrested the momentum back in the last four or five minutes. Boundary throw in once again. Inside the Tigers attacking 50, Townsend picked it up. Drag, couldn't get his kick away. Martin applied the tackle. Two, he's got it now. Gave it to Stewart. He just kicks a high ball in hope. Running in his broad. And he'll take the mark. 55 from goal. Stewart's night goes from bad to worse. That was a hard one. So he just had to dump it out. But he dumped it into the arms of broad. Now he's having a look. 55 out. Yet to kick a goal as well in his career. Game number 10 for him. There's a man free. Oh, that's... that's extraordinary defence. Vlosten. Or lack of it by Geelong. Vlosten just wandered down. He ran past Broad. And then he sat 15 metres closer to goal. Now, this is a genuine chance for a Richmond goal. 
poor defensive structure there, boys. What happened? Yeah, it was. The college, as he was sort of out on the wing, actually had to sit in between the two, couldn't commit to go to Vlosten, and, um, yeah, he got used up. Only kicked 19 goals in his career, Vlosten. He launches from 50, lays back on the footy. I tell you what, he's kicked 20 now. It's a beautiful kick. The little things are the big things in football. Geelong got a bit lazy. They let him wander inside 50. The result, Richmond are back out to an eight-point lead. 4-10-34, Geelong 3-8-26. Parsons the one, Chappie. His opponent, Broad's cut off the last couple of exits that Geelong have had. Just looks lame. Maybe put him back closer to goal where he doesn't have to be so mobile. Rain's coming down again, boys. Another shower. Well, a narrow lead in a rainy encounter. It's been a very mature response from Richmond, too. Well, the Tigers got out to as much as 21 points. They currently lead it 34 to 26. Smith elevates. Dangerfield smashes it forward. Ball partly smothered. Ricochets towards the cat side. Cochin handball releases Martin. Martin goes to Camden McIntosh. AFL logo far side. Low ball intercepted. Dangerfield. Gonna get tackled by Rebel. Got rid of it just in time. Oh, he's been a jumps. It's a throw. Advantage has been paid. Martin's gone forward. Cats are in disarray. Martin squares it into the middle. And Edwards. Great kick, Dustin Martin. He lowered the eyes. Edward was in the corridor unattended. And he's got a chance to stretch that lead again into double figures. He actually had the option on the outside to go further into the pocket, but chose to take the game on a lot more and try and create something through the corridor, and Edwards just uh, pops into the hole nicely. So the goal kickers have been Vlosten, Butler, Townsend and Caddy. And Edwards at his name. Punt road end. Oh. Edwards can. Oh. He's had luck to send the Richmond supporters get to meet uh, Rewald there with that tackle that he put on um, uh, Paddy Dangerfield. Actually just turned the ball over and gave his balls another chance. Tigers, Tigers now by 14. Geelong 3-8-26. Richmond 5-10-40. It's low scoring, but it is a tight, tough tussle. You, you mentioned, Kaza, just before about that noise of the Richmond faithful. <laughs> They're up and about now, I can tell you that much. Yeah. Comes a big five minutes now, boys. Five minutes till three-quarter time. Yep. Geelong need to probably get one on the board here. I like Chappie's words, a mature response by Richmond. It has been a steadying, strong response because Geelong kicked a goal and got right back in the contest. Out of the middle, Danger Field this time with a hand pass to Selwood. The old one-two gave it back to Danger. On the left boot, it's a wobbly footy. That might actually miss everything and go out of bounds on the full. They've had the last seven inside 50s, the Tigers. It's now eight apiece. It was 8-1, and they're catching up in disposals. Also, the contested possession starting to even up in this quarter. So Geelong have had not had their nose in front all night. They got it back earlier in this quarter to all even. But the Tigers now by 14 points. Scott Selwood's got it on centre wing. Handball's back to Dangerfield. He's caught again. Gives it to Guthrie, who almost threw it out the side door. Geelong inside 50. Hawkins on the lead, off target, out of bounds in the meatloaf pocket. 5-10-40 Richmond, 3-8-26 Geelong, margin 14 points. It's a good result for them, out of bounds. They just need everything to go their way. Five minutes to go, Subway eat fresh, third term action. Geelong 26, Richmond just skipping out 40 points. Numbers again with the Tigers. Edwards, the latest goal kicker, hacks it long. Henderson, he's there. Gee, he had enough of that for a mark. Wasn't paid. Maybe it is. Is it coming back? It's a hold. Well, it's a hold against Townsend, who then gives Henderson a little shove. He gets up a bit proppy, too. His ankle went underneath him in that contest. So Henderson goes to Hawkins. We'd like to see Hawkins London fog a bit. Well, he's worked hard, but he's been forced to come right up the ground to get a kick. He's had uh, Tommy Hawkins. He's only had the six effective disposal coming up for his 11th touch. Short little caressing ball from him. Collar Jasny marks. 60 from home. Far side. Collar Jasny sends it into the corridor. Zach Smith should fly at this. Does. Comes out the back. Tui, the Irishman, bends it round the body and has kicked a GMHBA point of the dice. City end could have been anything. Tigers by 13. Subway it fresh. That was a Paul Chapman ball, that one, wasn't it? That was Seagull on a hot chip yeah. stuff. 
Only the old 35 with the ball. Scon wouldn't have missed that one, though, chap. Um, Coza, to be honest. Two, he needed to kick that for Geelong. It wasn't to be. So Broad's got it in the back pocket. Kicks it to centre wing. A lot of the play been on the Brunton Avenue side in this quarter. Duncan picks it up for Geelong. Aimed a handball towards Parfit. Didn't quite have enough purchase on it. Colin Jasney was the uh, picker up of the uh, half smothered ball. Got it now back to Duncan. Into the middle he comes to Tui. Tui sells a bit of candy. Gets around Lambert. He goes long inside 50. Oh, well, wobbly footy. Fist on the ball. Richmond are under pressure now. Parsons bounces off his opponent. Desperate play. Both sides crash in. Can Geelong come up with the dangers in there? He applies the tackle. Umpire says... Oh, in the back. He's pushed him in the back. He sort of jumped over the top of the play to get hold of him and might have just... Yeah, sort of just ridden him in. Grimes. Yep to Grimes, who's going to take uh, a free kick for the Tigers. In the back pocket, he chips it short to Rance. Yeah, the All-Australian captain. A couple of Tigers getting into the lineup, And Rance keeps it down the southern stand side. Smith hit the pack hard, caused the spillage, but couldn't extract the Sharon. Now at ground level, it stacks on, and it will be a bounce. So with three minutes left, Subway at fresh scoreboard. Cats need one, 27 playing 40. Geelong have not been in front all night. Richmond jumped out of the blocks nice and early. Now numbers with the hoops out the back door. Selwood twists and turns. He's looking for an outlet. Gives to Collar Jasney. High left foot up and under. Camped underneath oh. it was Grimes and he was lovely. The protection was Free good. Kick, but the protection was illegal. Asprey held Hawkins out of the contest. And Hawkins is receiving the free kick. Asprey sort of had him round the waist. Was there a free kick there? Yeah, every day of the week, boys. Okay. Richmond faithful here, 65 odd thousand. Say so no. They just got their one eye on it though, Koza. That's the difference. <laughs> yeah. Hawkins, this is a vital goal if he can thread the middle. Come on, Tom Hawk, sink this. Wanders in, gets past 50. City end, high ball, accurate ball. Goal to Tom Hawkins. Cats continue to make their charge for a preliminary final. Geelong 4-9-33, Richmond 5-10-40, Subway eat fresh, Subway the healthy choice. Nice, nice response, Benny, um, to get that goal with a couple minutes to go in the third quarter. Once yeah. again, just got him back in the game. Yeah, Bree, Duncan's been good for the Cats. He's had eight touches in this third term uh, for the game. He is up to 22. Scotty Selwood working super hard, 23 possessions. Those two have been instrumental in this third term. Prestia up to 21 for the Tigers. Only 10 of those effective, though, and Dustin Martin the same. He's had 10 effective from 17 possessions. Hasn't kicked a goal game evenly poised. Seven points separate these two in the qualifying final. Geelong, who finished the season in second, Richmond in third. One of them will go to the prelim tonight. The other to take on the Swans or Essendon. That'll be decided tomorrow. You can listen to that one on K-Rock footy. Mackie kicks the ball out of bounds, but a boundary throw in in front of the members' stand. What time on air tomorrow, Cass, for that one? 3 o'clock. 3 p.m. tomorrow. The call of the Sydney Swans and Essendon. And, of course, the loser will be finished in 2007. And the winner will progress to play the loser of tonight's game. Boundary throw in again. Nan Curvis is in there for Richmond and the umpire says, I'll ball it up. 29. How long left, boys? couple of minutes left? Yeah, minute 39, Chuck. 99 seconds. So, gee, Geelong would dearly love to sneak another one as they did on the halftime siren now to go in to make it really tight. Oh, oh. gee, that's a wrong call. Caddy gets a free kick. He what wasn't was even hard at the ball either, Caddy. That's lucky. Got a lucky free kick, says Paul Chapman. He kicks the high ball inside 50. Oh. Field. This man is a magician. He just took the Hamlin Holmes courageous mark of the night. That is unbelievable. He went back with the fly to the ball, didn't know what was coming, and took an unbelievable grab. Caddy, not so unbelievable. Spilled a sitter. Might have heard a few footsteps on the dance floor for that one. Oh. Path had missed his target. Real chance squandered for Geelong as they streamed forward. On the half-back line, Edwards has it. Quick, dispossessed. Umpire said you can play on. Mackey fumbles. Parfit goes again. He showed a bit of clean composure. Gets it to Stewart. Stewart's tackled into the ground. Umpire said play it on again. Thrown out the side door. Now the Cats wobble one inside 50. Grimes, no, it's Asprey, in fact, goes back. 
for Richmond. Takes a steadying ball. Goes towards Martin. Martin versus Stewart. I know who my money's on. The champion, Dustin Martin, wins. Takes one. Takes two bounces. Then he kicks it to half forward. Really good use of the body by Rewald. He's got a man all alone. This is incredible stuff. Richmond get a goal. Is that Prestia? He was sitting in the goal square. Geelong were lost in space. Dustin Martin backed himself off half back. Transition footy. Boys, how does that happen in the modern day game? And Richmond get a telling goal. Yeah, well, the transition these days, we know the ball moves really quick, and if you're not switched on defensively, you're going to get hurt. But how good was that contest out there? I thought Stewart did enough, yeah. but um, Martin just shrugged him off. He fell over, unfortunately, because I reckon he had the leg speed to go with him. And how good was uh, Rewalt's body use before the ball even came in and then to swing quickly and, and find Prestia in the goal square? It's, it was great ball movement by the Tigers and one that they really needed late in the third. Cats had an opportunity. Parfit needed to hit up the target. Couldn't get it done. And with 10 seconds left in the third term, Smith casting the roll of the Rover. Has to find it at ground level. Costanya does. High up and under. Last chance saloon. If they mark it here, Jed Pierce arrives. And the Cats dodge a last second bullet, literally, as Richmond fans get up off their plastic and cheer their team on. Have a listen to this, guys. <laughs> oh. Bucky, what's it like at ground level? Absolutely unbelievable. All the Richmond supporters are on their feet, just willing their boys home. What about that last-minute danger field? Then Martin, the two champions of this game. Absolutely. So as it stands at three-quarter time, Geelong, 4-9-33. I'm refusing to believe they're done and dusted, though. 4-9-33 to Richmond at 6-10-46. So the Tigers led at 12 at the first break, 9 at the long change, and they now lead by 13. One more quarter to decide who goes into a preliminary final. The rain's coming. Yeah, it looks like it might be just favouring the Bratton Avenue end in this last quarter, which will be the end that Richmond will kick. Uh, the only real big injury is the one to Cam Guthrie. He's out, back out with the boys at the three-quarter time huddle, but that uh, right calf is heavily strapped. He did have it eyes. He'll take no further part in the game, so he must be in doubt for the rest of the final series. Uh, Bucky downstairs for Total Tools. Every tool for every trade. Quickly for Fags, might attend. Throw a couple of stats yeah, at the boys. Yeah, alarmingly for the Cats, they had 23 more disposals, 10 more contested possessions, one more tackle, three more inside 50s, uh, and five more clearances in that quarter, and they were outscored. We are on air thanks to Warrow Lily and now Goddings, your Kubota excavator specialist, platinum dealer Lee Brown and also Paul Chapman. Yeah, boys, that was a great finals uh, quarter of footy, that from both teams. I loved it. Geelong came out and were really solid around the contest and uh, the Tigers were a little bit fumbly, but then, you know, they started to get their game going and... Um yeah, they're lucky to get that last goal, but, um, you know, uh, the Cats won't be worried about this at all. They'll be giving it everything they got, and I still think they can get the job done. All set up in the first five minutes here, boys. Uh, Selwood, Dangerfield need to step up. That's the Joel variety, and uh, they can put their stamp on this game. Tigers by 13 points. Warralilly, you'll love the Warralilly way of life. Our number one ticket holder. We're into September for finals footy. Does Geelong get the week off? Do Richmond progress to a preliminary final? Darren Berry to get us underway for the final term. Smith and Nankervis. Nankervis runs around the little circle in the middle. Then he does the roving. Kicks it with his right foot to half forward. Rewold out in front. Can he get free? Might have been Caddy, in fact. Threw it onto his left boot. Only went about 10 metres. Dangerfield picked it up and was tackled by Martin. Duncan then picked up the loose ball and sent it into the middle of the ground. Scrambly passage. Tiger player injured. Down on his hands and knees. I think he's OK. It's Floston. Floston. Scotty Selwood got it to Murdoch, who fumbled. Cake of soap. Couldn't take clear possession. He's going to be bang. Over. He made no effort, did he, Chappie? No. He just sat on it. Yeah, he just gave up once he didn't get the ball and fumbled it. Three effective disposals from Murdoch. Yeah, they've had a lot of players down Geelong, yet still they're a chance to win this game. That's extraordinary. Now Mitch Duncan, he's tried hard, gets it to Dangerfield. Wobbly footy. I think this is out of bounds on the full as well. A couple of times Danger's kicked the wobbly ball. No change to the structure, Chappie. Still Harry Taylor, who's been clearly beaten tonight by Rance, has stayed at full forward. Oh, gee whiz, that could have been a free kick against Buse. He almost punched his opponent in the face with the don't argue. Wobbly footy. And Geelong haven't started well. Koch and Marks on centre wing. Gloucester looks OK. He had to stand under the high ball from Hawkins and 110 kegs made him earn it. Cochin heads down the members' side. 
Smith did well to punch it away and try and kill the contest. The hurried ball from Richmond is chopped off by Tui in the back 50. He wants to go across the goal face. Dangerous proposition. So he turns and comes back members' side. Just gets boot to ball. Danger field has to mark underneath. Pressure was coming from Ellis. Danger tried to handball off the ground. It was intercepted. Now the numbers with the Tigers. Asprey round Parfit. Back inside the attacking zone for Richmond. Tui can't mark. Lonigan overran it. Rioli, clever handball. Through Edwards. Now to Martin. Gives the don't argue. Open goal square. Feeds off. Revolt will run in and kick a banana points. Cats hanging by a claw at the moment. Geelong 4-9. Richmond 6-11. Subway eat fresh scoreboard. Coach Killer, handball while you're still on the deck. It oh. uh, very rarely comes <laughs> off. Yeah, that was an unusual one. Geelong need a goal, and they need it quickly just to apply a bit of pressure. No one went for that ball, so Lonigan said, well, if no one wants it, I'll mark it. He feeds a handball to Selwood. Danger fumbles on centre wing. He's going to run into traffic here. Gives away the ball. Cotchen on his hands and knees for Richmond. Opposed by Selwood, his opposing number, Skipper. Presti has got a loose ball. He runs, drills a low ball, bounces off Rewalt's chest. 55 from goal. Martin with the best don't argue in the game. Shrugs his hips. He gets away from two of them. Then he thumps the ball to the teeth of goal. There's a Tiger there. Tiger's got another easy one. The architect was the brilliance of Dustin Martin. Greek was the man, I think, sitting in the goal square. But what about that effort, Paul Chapman and Lee Brown? I think the best don't argue player to ever play the game. He shrugged one, shrugged the second and thumped at 50. Yeah, it's a great call, Chuck. He's unbelievable. That wasn't the first time he did it in his quarter. He's done it like four or five times. Not only that, how clean the Tigers are. It's a wet, slippery ball out there, and it's, it's hard to handle. And they've been a lot cleaner, and uh, Martin's just an exceptional player. And it's, it's fantastic to watch and exactly what his team needed. Also, boys, what's going on here is that Richmond is starting with seven behind the play. They're getting one to come in off the square and dragging a Geelong play with them, which then frees up uh, Loston. Nearly the biggest separation of the night. 20 points to margin. Goddings, your Kubota excavator specialist scoreboard for the final term. And no one can get it out of the square. It's just gone forward 15 metres for the Tigers. Stop the Shojin concrete. <laughs> Is that it's exploding? Oh, getting antsy. Jimmy the bug, I think we're done. Mick Jakes, I wish we had a quality mid-size forward. Uh, yes. Oh. And now Lambert runs onto it. Game 50 for Lambert. It's gone across the goal face. Now Trick that's trickles equal. through from minor one. Now it is a game yep. equal 21 points. Something needs to change up, boys. You can't just keep playing the same way Great and, and lose this game. Maybe swap Henderson and Taylor over. Just do something different. Great shout, Randy. Uh, well, I was going to say great minds. I won't put my mind in your mind, but I thought the same. Three-quarter time when Harry Taylor came out, I thought, put him back and put Henderson forward. So nothing happens out of the Geelong coaching box. It's same, same, same. And this man, Rance, has oh. led Taylor tonight on a merry dance, handball towards the boundary line. Grimes sort of cleverly pretended to bring it back in and run over the line. Beautifully played. He's had three effective disposals as uh, Harry Taylor. Rance is at 30 possessions for the Tigers. How many for uh, Presti in this last quarter so far, yeah, Benny? Presti is up to 26 for the game. He's the leading disposal winner for the Tigers. And in this final term, he's already touched the ball three times. Dangerfield and Selwood, the two prime movers, they're champions of the game. They've done bits and pieces, but not to their usual high standard. Dustin Martin's near the footy again. He'll probably do something. Of course he will. He'll take the handball off Rewalt. Takes one bounce. He'll go inside because he's unselfish. This might be game over. Butler takes the mark. 30 metres from goal. And once again, Dustin Martin, instrumental. Rewalt handballed it to Martin. He bounced the ball and then he looked inside and he found Butler. 30 from goal. What he's been able to do, Chuck, is actually just keep it really simple. There's space in front of him. He runs. Listen to this, boy, because he comes to the field. That was They're on their feet for the Tiger champ. Signed a contract worth $47 million during the week for seven years. He's worth every cent. This could be the nail in the Geelong coffin. Butler kicks it like a crustacean. That was off the right pincer. It was a shocking kick. Geelong still remotely alive. The margin is 22 points. There is still time if Geelong are good enough. They haven't played that way tonight. Geelong almost need to double their score, though. 
Six minutes travelled, final term. Goddings, who are Kubota excavator specialist, platinum dealer. Adrian and Amanda, as the Cats bring it down the members' side. Dangerfield can't mark. Motlop got pushed off the ball at ground level, then almost in the back. That's what Tiger fans wanted. Wasn't paid. 35 metres out, 45 degree angle. They are piling on, and it will be a bounce. 22 points, game high lead. Just getting back to the coach thing, like, I understand Chris Scott wants to back his team, mate, his team to do their job, but it comes a time in a game where you've actually got to make your imprint on a game and help your, your team out. Chappie, you made plenty of imprints, especially in September. Let's hope one of the Cats can step up and do it this time. Zach Guthrie taken down the ground by Butler. Didn't really have a chance, umpire. You can't ping him on that. Point of the square, Southern stand side. Cats in defence, and it'll be about 5 2 2 3 2 95 5 after the siren, Cat fans. 5 2 2 3 2 95 5. You can give us your thoughts on Geelong September so far. Richmond back into attack. Ball in the corridor. Rioli, he's got the pace. The high up and unders. It might go through for a minor one, if not out of bounds on the full. And it is the latter. So the Cats, again, that claw is almost half a claw. I reckon 4-9 Geelong, 7-13 Richmond. Yep, they've got to get one quickly. Every Richmond player is pushed high here. Rance even... The full back is pushed right up to centre wing, trying to close and lock it in. Grimes for Richmond on the left boot. Really nice, clever touch. Back into Rioli. Rioli over the top. The handball went to Graham. Graham gave it to Lambert. Lambert kicks a goal! The Tigers are on their feet at the MCG. They lead it by 28 points. And I'm suggesting the rather large one might be singing now. 4-9-33 to long. Richmond at 8-13-61. Thank you, Brent. Shell shock, Jack. Yeah, it's unbelievable. It's, I'm just looking here. The last time Geelong failed to score 40 points in a final, they still might get there. There's still plenty of time, but at the moment, they don't like scoring a goal. Last time they failed to reach 40 points was the semi-final against South Melbourne in 1914. Oh. Rich, Richmond are lining up with a three-man forward line. Talk us through that in a moment, Paul Chapman and Lee Brown. Dusty off the square. Look don't ogle the parfait. That arm's worth about $8 million just by itself. Tigers are surging forward. It's like the wildebeest. They give it back to Martin. He loads up from the square city end. The kick's gone a bit. Oh. Is the mark going to be paid right on the point post? Townsend is that man in game number three. Right on the point post. Dustin Martin again. What a quarter of footy by the champion. So Townsend come into the lineup and has just played only the third game of this season. He runs around, goes across the body. It's over. That is it. Tigers into a preliminary. Cats will have to do it the hard way. 5 2 2 3 2 95 5 after the siren. Geelong 4 9 33. Richmond 9 13 67. Townsend has put the full stop on this qualifying final. Geez, what a strong mark that was, particularly in the conditions. It's a wet, slippery ball out there. And just love what the Tigers have done. They've been. Far more out selfish, unselfish, sorry, than what the Cats have been. They're just pushing it on. They're making the game easier for their team. Yeah, they are in this final term. Chappie Martin's had five touches, gained 193 metres, three inside 50s, four score involvements. They've had 37 disposals to 20, nine inside 50s to none in this final term. 34 points the Tigers lead it by, and they're still hunting. They're ferocious. Lambert affected the smother and went inside 50. Going back with the flight was Buse. Can he keep it in? He slipped over, but he kept it in just. Steered it inboard to Motlop. Gee, they've got to move real quick now. The Cats is ticking over 11 minutes. Motlop, with one of the worst kicks you've ever seen in football, have no idea what he was trying to do, but he kicked it straight to Edwards. Edwards sends the Tigers back inside 50. They're lining up for them at the moment. George Castagna takes a Hamlin home tanker. It's a raffle at the moment. The Tigers are lining up and the Cats are in disarray. 
Well, it was a good mark from Castagna. He's been a little bit fumbly all day and taking a little while to get into the game. But um, Stephen Mollop, I'm not quite sure what he was doing. He's trying to kick around corners. We've spoken about the conditions and it's a wet football. And, you know, yes, take the game on, but you've got to be smarter with your ball use. They haven't won a final for a long, long time, Richmond. Castagna spears it through the guts and spears it through the heart of the Cats. He gets his first. All of a sudden, boys, Richmond are 40 points in front. They are into a preliminary final. Yeah, they're impressive, aren't they? The brand of footy they play, the pressure in that first half set it up and they've been able to uh, really hit the scoreboard in this last quarter. It's important now, Chappie, for Geelong to actually get their hands on the ball and create a little bit of momentum late in this game so they can carry it through to next week. Yeah, good call. Boys, getting back to what we are talking about, again, they're starting heaps off the back of the square. That's defence first. And what I loved last time when they did it was they actually got the ball and hit one up short and just slowed it down so the rest of the field could actually catch up and then get involved in the play. Tigers have got three coming off the back of the square. Smith to Selwood. He's tackled high and should get the resultant free kick. And maybe the advantage is going to be paid. Motlop wants to get away with it. No, Yellow Sharon has to come back. Right in the heart of the G. Selwood short to Dangerfield. Oh, he, he took a little half step. Butler shut him down. Dangerfield just into some vacant territory. Vlosten tried to punch it away. Ball in the corridor. Edwards sharked that the tackles aren't sticking at the moment for the Cats. They move it out. Rance, Dustin Martin, far side of the ground. Dusty picks it up. Richmond faithful get up off their seats. He feeds to Butler. Butler short ball is exquisite to Kenny. Kenny marks 20 metres out directly in front. The transference was sensational. Cats, no chance. Swan Street Bridge Road is just going to be locked down tonight. <laughs> Hope my car's all right out there, John. Oh. <laughs> this, this reminds me, and, and Chappie, you're in a better position to comment on this than I am, but this reminds me of Geelong when, at their peak, when they shared the ball around, everyone got their own opportunity when, when they were in the right position. So totally Caddy agree. against his former team, Josh Caddy, City end, Anthony Miffin starting to derail right about now, I would think. Another one for Caddy. 46. Geelong 4-9-33. Richmond 11-13-79. They are spifflicating the Cats in this final term. Goddings, your platinum Kubota excavator dealer. Well, Richmond are digging a hole for Geelong with said Kubota. Yeah, that those numbers in this final term. It's oh. almost embarrassing for the Cats. 12 inside 50s to 1. 23 contested possessions to 9. Clearance is 6-2 in favour of the Tigers. They've gained nearly 600 metres more than the Cats. We're only midway through this term. Geelong have given up. Well, there's still 10 minutes to go, too. Deal nothing out of the Geelong coaching box. That's what I want to talk about post-match. Harry Taylor has been like a stale bottle up forward and has stayed there all night while Richmond have run riot. It's been a staggering performance by Richmond, that's for sure. Out of the middle, Scott Selwood. Looping handball. Too little, too late. Motlop took it off Mackey. Onto the right boot he goes. Sends it forward. Murdoch, Hawkins, but guess who? The All-Australian captain. Alex Rance takes a Hamlin Holmes hanger. Might have hurt himself as he landed. He went up and over and landed heavily, actually, on his back and shoulders. He's been sensational. Harry Taylor belted him a month ago down at Geelong. He's a proud man. What an answer he's given tonight, boys. It's been sensational. He kicks at the centre wing. Sitting underneath it, though, the small man, Guthrie. Free kick on it to the Tigers. To the big man in Nankervis. So, Nankervis, ball at centre wing. 33 playing 79. Cats are being blown out of the water. High kick from Stewart. Centre wing. Oh, big fist. Vlosten, king of the wildlings. Just got it away. Only went as far as Duncan. He's got an outrider in Buse. He feeds off. Murdoch, favoured left foot. Open goal square. Murdoch doesn't get any bend on the ball. And Rance thumps it away from Taylor. Mm. Out of bounds. Left forward pocket. Punt road end. Tigers fans on their feet. Because Murdoch needs to slow down a little bit. He dropped that ball like I've never seen someone yeah. drop a football before. Yeah. And, and spun eight times before it actually yeah, hit the laces. Yeah, uh, very strange. I thought it was Phil Cracker, actually, yeah. the way he kicked that. He's had three effective disposals, Murdoch. OK, so questions are going to be asked. The loser to go against either Sydney or Essendon. 
Dangerfield got it forward. Grimes sharked it though. Taylor was in his back pocket. Couldn't affect anything. The ball, the exit one for Richmond goes far side of the ground. Mackey tracks it back. Retirement here for Andrew Mackey. Sells a little bit of candy. Runs his full measure. Tired kick inside the attacking zone. Hawkins elevated hugely. Got the foot right in the back of Lostard. And 30 metres out, brought the ball down to ground but couldn't clutch it. Love that from Hawkins. That's what I'd love to see in the first quarter. Just Boston standing in front of you, stick your knees in him and see how many times you want to stand there again. He's got him twice this quarter, hasn't he? Yeah, and he continues to stand there. So credit to Vlosten. Ball elevated from the stoppage. Menegola, Basha Hooley. Boundary line will be the winner. And Blitzarms gets knocked out of the way Just by Stop the Blitz. Jojen Conference for the Cat fans. There's a fair bit of vitriol. Davey and Beebe saying if game plan was to lose, it was executed perfectly. Well... I don't know whether that's plan A, but the question is, is there a plan B? Is there a plan C? points, Coza. Ball comes back in. Hawkins from the ruck contest. Left peg from him into the corridor. Lonigan's down there. There's a wrestle on. Parsons pushed off the ball last moment. And it just shaves in for a minor one. And the Cats haven't kicked the goal in this final term. Geelong 4 10 34 Richmond 11 13 79 Goddings your Kubota excavator specialist well they've only kicked four goals for the game and we've spoken about it our calls have spoken about it where are they going to get enough goals from to win a game of football four goals 10 ain't going to win too many games of footy I'm sure the fans will have their say like to hear from you post match and I just, I'm looking forward already I know there's still 10 minutes of footy left here either one Essendon speed will trouble Geelong the Swans' toughness. So they're going to have a tough road now. Richmond, they'll get a week off at Punt Road. And then they will take on one from the other side of the draw, which will obviously be GWS, Port Adelaide or the Eagles, to take on the Tigers in a preliminary final. It's been a long, long time since the Tigers have done it. It's a wonderful story. Shuffle the decks in the off-season. Different forward line structure. They have come to play tonight. They are going to win this with a leg in the air. Blitzarves. Sort of the sting's gone out of it a bit now as Basha Hooley happily sees it over the boundary line. Centre wing. Well, Damien Hardwick and Nathan Buckley were the two coaches under pressure coming in. They reshuffled the coaching structure around Damien Hardwick and it has come up roses for the Tigers. Yep, absolutely. Carousella clearly has had a fair bit to say about ball movement, perhaps taking a lot of Geelong's success to the Tigers. Neil Baum come in at the helm. Uh, Lepic has gone in there as an assistant. So well done to the Tigers. They've reinvented, and wow, they've been impressive this year and very impressive tonight. Five goals to Zippo in this last quarter. Well, the text messages starting to arrive in the jungle. The Tigers eat the cats. That's just arrived. The Shojin Concrete Twitter is exploding. 5-2-2-3-2-95-5. Happy to take your calls, Cats fans. When the siren sounds, we'll go down to the Richmond rooms. Dustin Martin gets the ball away over the top. In the end, they can't get it away completely. Tui turns up, gives to Motlock. Look at that tackle. They are tackling in numbers, the Tigers. And on the southern stand side, in the shadows of that enormous stand, it will be another ball up. 34 Geelong, Richmond 79. Benny will get that stat for lowest score in a final because they don't look like breaching the 40-point mark at all. And this is going to be some record, I reckon, Cass. Yeah, I'm just looking through and I'm... Well, the roar you got was because Dangerfield tried a torpedo, went outside the right of the size 10 and went out of bounds on the full. They're going to be saved by that star-studded team in uh, not two, 1903 <laughs> who kicked 4-5 in the semi-final against Fitzroy. No, did you see that match? Uh, it was tough early yeah. and uh, champion oh. data uh, suggested that uh, the Cats won the contested possession that day but couldn't hit the scoreboard. Koza was in the under-19s They left, they left Dan Menzel out of that side too, which oh, cost him. There he is. <laughs> oh, yeah. The stepfather has jumped in again. Oh, oh, did you play? You did play in the 19s in that game, that uh, final, didn't you? Actually, yeah, I did. Detroit. Yeah. Yeah, you had to get the tram there. Well, Actually, they kicked three, six, twenty-four, and nine hundred and one. We're off target a little bit. Not as off target as Geelong no. have been tonight. Very disappointing and stagnant. Coaches' boxes staggered all of us. Blitzards run away, runs away from the stoppage. Kicks Geelong deep inside fifty. Rance has been enormous all night. Hang on, Harry Taylor. Something late. Maybe a goal. Touched off the boot. No crowd noise, no nothing. No goal. It's goal. a goal. We'll just whisper. Harry Taylor gets his first goal of the night. What kick was that for Harry, please, Ben? 
Harry Taylor has had, that was just his fourth effective disposal for this game. Lockie Henderson has only had four kicks. Jordan Murdoch, I mentioned him earlier, three effective disposals. James Parsons, two effective disposals and zero tackles. Five kicks for Zach Guthrie, four kicks for Jed Bue, six kicks for Jake Polly. What I love is the fact we asked Ben to get the record books out and every time he does, Stuff he's only mentioned it for 30 no. seconds and then it changes. Yes, well, yes. <laughs> it's a disaster. It takes him, he's got to use all too. his fingers and thumbs. He's taking his shoes off for his toes. Ball back into the middle. Ben Casanilia, best in the house for Fags, might attend. Heath Buck is downstairs. He'll go into the Richmond rooms. We'll get you an interview. We'll take your calls. Mackie off the back of the square. Gets the Cats going forward. Basher Hawley. Parfit. Hawley. Clever over the top to Caddy. Caddy gets around. Scott Selwood drew a couple of tacklers. Got it over to the Butler. He runs across the AFL logo. Centre wing member's side. Henderson tried to backhand that back to himself. Numbers though with the Tigers. Zach Guthrie has to tackle and the ball is stopped. It will be elevated. Members side three metres in from the boundary. 95,028 fans have trekked to the Mecca to mm. see this spifflication of the Tigers. Well, on a the couple cats. of them might have left, I would suggest by now. The numbers are thinning out unless they're wearing yellow and black. And won't they roar that out in the Tigers theme song? No one can get away and we'll have a secondary stoppage still. Presti has been enormous. 28 yeah. possessions. Martin's last quarter has been huge. He's now up to 25. Edwards has good, been good with 23. Lambert underrated with 22. There's Presti out. Give him another one. He's kicked it in to the hot spot 20 metres out from goal. Zach Guthrie and Henderson have to work together. Henderson applies to oh, Shepard. Guthrie could no. pick it up. Ball tumbles out of bounds. No. It's not going to be paid deliberate. It will be a boundary throw in right in front of the race. Far side. If I was Damien Hardwick, I'd get the Rolls Royce off. Five minutes yep. to go. Correct. Rance benched. Yep. Uh, Rance has certainly done a masterful job down back on Taylor. Ball to come back in. The margin is huge. 39 points. Motlop, just a hacking ball. Vlostin was in the region. Couldn't mark it. Now it comes back to him from Grimes, who did some good work on Hawkins. High kick underneath. Oh, Revolt's trying to take magical mark. Oh, have a look at Conchin. Turn the oh, ball. Turn goal. in and out. That's your dear mate's BA goal of the night. Trent Conchin went through a nest of cats. Turned this way and that. And that is an incredible goal at the shitty end from the Richmond skipper. Here's a big call. That's one of the best goals I've ever seen. Have a look at that on the replay. That... The way he hit that pack, Chappie, you describe it because you're looking at me with the same feeling. That was incredible. Yeah, it was incredible. And it's really wet too and oh. it was clean and he took his medicine and spun in the tackle and then put it on the boot. It went straight through the middle. Oh. That, that, that's goal of the year. They've already given it out, haven't they? But that's goal of the year. Unbelievable by Cochin. It's goal 1385 to Geelong 5, 10, 40. Symbolic of the night. Cochin's been enormous. That's one of those pieces of play that can't be described by us. You have to watch the replay of that tonight to see the brilliance, the courage and the skill that Cochin showed there. Speaking of courage and skill, Martin's on the bottom of the pack. Gives it to Hooley. Kicks it off the ground. It goes to half forward. Lambert sits under it. Goes out wide to Edwards. This might make it 50 points. Edwards chips into a leading revolt. Who marks 45? Geelong have given up. Yeah, it's stopped. There's hands on hips. Even from their champions in the midfield, they're looking around going, what is going on here? Richmond had three players run forward of that ball with nobody on them. 15 inside, 50s to 5 in this final quarter. They've gained 1,354 metres. Geelong have had 31 effective disposal in this term. That's it. I'm still in awe of the Cochin goal as we watch Rewalt line up from 45 metres out. This for a 51-point belting! Tigers are into a preliminary final. Geelong have got a lot of soul-searching to do tonight and in the next seven days before they come up in a cutthroat semi-final. Rewalt with his first of the night. Don't worry about one goal. He's been very good. 13-13-91. Geelong. Poultry. 5-10-40.
What I love about that play is it's actually the individuals in the middle of the ground. They're happy to hold on to the ball and take their medicine, wait for the cats to come to them, then feed it out to the next bloke who does exactly the same thing. Yes, they were lucky it was a kick off the ground that went forward, but their setups have been perfect all night. And the most important thing is that the cats, uh, the Tigers players have in- implemented their game plan and they're buying into something. Back into the middle we go. A horror movie unfolding for the cats. Oof. Tigers bring it forward again. They're going to be under all sorts of scrutiny. Caddy went off the ground. Lambert's tracking. He swats it back. They are playing like millionaires at the moment. Grigg goes in and out. The kick, though, partially smothered. Ricochets back to Mackey. Oh, it's intercepted. Speaking of millionaires, here he is, Dustin Martin. Handballs it back to Bashahooli. Goes down low. Vlosten has to be hurried round the corner. And Mackey just stands resolute. 55 out from his own goal. He's kicked it, though, to Bashahooli, who swept the cross in front of Hawkins. It hasn't been the best night for the Hawk. And took a mark. Bashahooli with 3.30 to go in the final term, thanks to Goddings and Warralili. Love the Warralili way of life. High ball from Bashahooli. They are starting to fly. Rioli couldn't bring it down to ground level. Topoke only went as far as Tui. Now they've got numbers. They revolt. He just threw the ball away there, umpire. Henderson's tackle was good. Now Selwood gets tackled by Grimes, who's down there. Dusty tries 18, don't argue. Gets it on the boot eventually. Zach Guthrie's there. Looping handball over the top. Murdoch. Oh, he gave it to Motlop, who ran straight smack into Caddy. Turned him back the other way. Brought the ball down. And 65 from home for the Tigers at the city end. It'll be a bounce on the members' side. Wait for the roar. Rance has been taken off. They listen to K-Rock, the commentary team, in the coach's box. And off comes Dustin Martin. <laughs> Get the two champions off. Why wouldn't you? You're 51 points in front. Motlop on the half-back line for Geelong. Only a couple of moments left in the contest. I'd be putting Rance and Martin away now. No need for them. You've done your job. And yeah. here comes the Richmond skipper. And then Curvis is the other one that's off, boys. He's just as important as the other three. Yep. Good call. Lee Brown in the back row. So all the champs are off now. The Ruckman and their three gold nuggets. Still they surge forward. Still they take another mark. Lambert will go back and line up 45 metres out. Geelong have stopped. Uh, when they were all coming off, you see Jack Graham just vacated the pine and just stood, stood somebody thought, I'm going back on. <laughs> it's sort of like the gold class suits <laughs> yeah, and uh, economy. <laughs> he, they got on the plane, turned left, straight up to the uh, point end. Just ironically, with uh, George Chamberlain suggesting it was 26 apiece with eight minutes left in the third term and Richmond going to kick 100 points. Lambert, shocking kick off the boot. Won't even register a score, I don't think. Smith sort of sat under it. Sting has gone out of this game, but there's been a lot of sting in it from Richmond. This has been a really impressive performance, and the dream from Tigerland, not since 1980. They're into a prelim, boys. We're going to talk about it ad nauseum post-match. I reckon the noise when that final siren goes, Geelong coughed up again in board to Caddy. He's had a fair bit of it. Caddy with a drilling ball. Rioli. Rewalt comes out to meet it. Rioli. Look at the fleet-footed little Ford pocket. Then he snaps a Barney Banana. It goes across the face of goal. Greg, they're lining up. Ellis sits underneath this one. This is unbelievable. He kicks a short ball. Butler drops it. Castagna picks it up. He snaps around the corner. Not quite enough. Weak picks this morning for George and Mackey on the last line. Relieving Mark gives it to Tui. Tui kicks it back into the middle. Caddy sits underneath it again. See, they've turned it over to Cats tonight. And they're just putting each other under pressure. So, Caddy. 83 turnovers, Geelong. 83. That is phenomenal numbers. We'll analyse them for Fags Might at 10 after the siren and More take your calls. 5-2, 2 minus, 3 2 minus 5 20 in contested possession. Minus 20 in inside 50s. And they're going to about 1,000 metres more. 34 seconds to go before you can start unloading with the Fags Mitre 10. Dangerfield. Ball hemmed in on the boundary. Tackle just gets rid of it. Men a goal of Jordan Murdoch. Murdoch. They throw him over the line. And Edwards was the tackler there. He Last rights one. being administered. It's a good sign from the Tigers. Tackling right to the end. Grimes looks out in his feet. He wanted to come to the bench and then realised it was uh, their gold class and yeah. got their uh, feet up. They got their moccasins on. <laughs> Executives only, Dylan. Sorry about that. As the ball's taken out, Townsend. Well, Motlop tries to give him a bit of chirp in the ear. 
The siren is about to sound. The ball will come back in. The Tigers fans oh, will go completely this. bereft. Listen to the roar, Koza. Literally seconds to go. I'll give you the score now. You won't hear it after. 5, 10, 40, Geelong. Richmond, 13, 13, 91. There it is. Richmond. Sirens. Sounds and Richmond into a preliminary final. Cats have got to go via the Cape and wait for their next opponent tomorrow. Richmond win by 51 points. Caddy ended up with two, Townsend and two, but all the others were singles. Revolt, Boston, Prestia, Grigg, Cochin with one of the goals of the year. Edwards was in there as well. Lambert, Butler and Castagna. And for the Cats, it is a short list. Taylor, Motlock, Hawkins, Parsons and also Dangerfield. 12 points at quarter time, 9 points at half time, 13 points at three quarter time. Tigers were not headed and they won it by 51. to grab a little bit of Dustin Martin interview with the host broadcaster. That's a noise, mate. I can't hear anything, really. Did the crowd, did you feed off that? Because it's unbelievable, the noise here. Yeah, mate, it just provides great energy. It was unreal. I loved it. Mate, what about the skipper tonight? I thought he, he set us up early. Yeah, he's a great leader. I love playing with him. And, uh, yeah, it was a good game by the skip. <laughs> Cox, uh, mate, so you did there. What on, Dusty? Cox, uh, you looked like you had a real resolve early in the game. You had five tackles in the first quarter. You really wanted to set the standard. Yeah. I think so. I mean, that, that's your job. Um, the boys have a role to play, each and every one of us, and that's what we love doing, showing up and getting to work together. I thought the defence tonight was outstanding. Obviously, Alex Rance played well, but I reckon over the last two months, Nick Boston's gone to a new level down there. Yeah, absolutely. He's playing out of his skin. Um, you know, it's a credit to the guys, the work they do during the week uh, and the way they show up on game day. Uh, they stay in the moment, that's really important. Like, so you've got a couple of weeks off now, and obviously the Richmond fans be reasonably excited, I would think. What are you going to do? Are you going to embrace that energy? I think you have to. If you try to shy away from it, you know, away from the footy club, people are going to want to talk about it. you just got to enjoy that, I suppose. Um, you know, it's been a long time, but the reality is that when we're inside our four walls, we've got work to do, and we know that, you know, there's going to be, what, four teams left that are vying for that uh, final two positions, and um, we need to get to work and make sure that we prepare as well as we possibly can. Be pleased for Dimmer, mate. So obviously, you know, the, the elephant in the room, the elimination finals losses should be really pleased for him tonight. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, all the pressure's always on the coaches. Um, you know, he's been amazing this year and, and throughout last year. He's uh, he's shown that steely resolve and he's led from the front. So all we can do is get behind him and, and play for him. And the pressure that you built the whole year on tonight was probably the best it's been all year. So really built your game off that all year. <laughs> yeah, you'd, li you'd like to hope that in finals. I mean, we know that they're, they're a contested game and, um, you know, the guys, whether it was the forward line, midfield or backs, I thought we, we played our role uh, significantly well. Geelong are a fantastic team and, uh, you know, they'll fight their way through the next couple of weeks, I'm sure. Well done, Coach. So there you go, Matthew Richardson. We're almost to the Essendon uh, Swans game after that particular interview. He's pretty excited, Richo. The former Tiger himself, he even slipped in an us there in that interview. He said, uh, Koch got us off to a great start. Dustin Martin and Trent Koch, and we do thank Channel 7 for the use of that interview 